Yeah. Eso es breve, ya tus pasos se acercan. Tú me debes una noche con maldad. Yo soy preso de esos besos. Siempre apunto a lo fijo, por eso estoy contigo Y porque la pasamos genial, es un castigo Eso es lo que conmigo, encontraste tu abrigo Y por ahí encontraste algo más Tú lo sabes No nos desvimos del caso, solo tú y yo mujer Tú eres perfecta, tú eres mi caro Y yo puedo ser tu nena Sé que tú quieres más de eso La que tírame ese hueso Que él no te dio lo que te di Y no solo hablo del sexo lo que yo te di Baby, te quiero para mí Si nos apuramos, no disfrutamos de el momento. Ya, 
tuit de mañana Mi consejo sabes que no es Te doy el desquite Que me quites Todas esas ganas que te tengo muerto Todo el mundo sabe que tú y yo Somos más que panas Pero nos vamos lento Que el que se apura No llega a nada No llega a nada
you just don't you don't care cause you don't take me seriously what's there to repair if you don't want to talk to me you should know your time is up i'm out i'm done so i put you on a lifetime sentence Show boy, making that say what's wrong or right. Oh, snap! It's not hard to fool me. Cause I'm addicted to the good life. Yeah, lead the way. I follow. No need to say black women. Christian feminist black women Christian feminist somebody lying to me cause they're fine no matter what black women Christian feminist mm. what is that Kevin, I don't know. What is a black Christian feminist? Moderators, somebody in the moderator, please get the definition of feminism and place it in the chat room. Moderators, definition of feminism. We're in the chat room. City. Gender. City. Gender. City gender. Oh yeah. Before the moment tries. Woo! Time to cook. You are going to be respectful tonight, though. I'll tell you that much. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome to one of the most requested shows I have ever done. So some ground rules. Tonight, you're going to be respectful because this is going to be a sensitive subject, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to antagonize each other. Okay, not going to do that. If you are not a Christian, that's cool. That's cool. If you think Christianity is for the birds, that's cool. Sit back, relax, enjoy, get some popcorn, but really don't need to hear from you in this regard because it's going to get deep. Okay. If you are a misogynist and you're just looking to see a bunch of women get cooked and drugged for filth, that ain't this show. 
There will be a call-in portion to the show. Yes, there will be a call-in portion to the show. You will have a chance to sound off and tell me how stupid I am, how ignorant I am, how my mama black and, you know, you know, somebody hurt me and I'm secretly download gay or whatever it is you want to tell me about my stupid self you know we'll have our time to do all that you'll sure you'll knock yourself out you'll have plenty of time to to call in and, and say all that not really but i want you to feel like you do so yeah uh where is that button at as we get into this show, guys, I need you, you guys to remember something. We're trying to move the needle forward. And in order to do that, there's going to be some breakage. I will ask you guys a question. How many of you guys, uh, how many men in here go to church? How many guys still attend church? If you attend church, put a one in the chat room. I will say this, that I know for a fact that there are more men who have left the church than ever. The church uh, today is almost void of male leadership and presence, which is, which is really crazy considering my boy, there was men everywhere. And one of the major reasons you hear for why men have left the church is because it's become uh, a, a place of just straight up rank feminism. That's what guys are saying. It's like, man, it's feminist ideology in conjunction with this prosperity preaching. There's just no consequence. When you can be a mother of a single mother of four kids by five different guys and sit front row center, uh, things have changed. I'll just say that way. Things have really changed. Now, I'm not one of these people who thinks Christians should be snobs, but that I mean, at some point, we got to start having, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? All right. One thing that I kind of started to notice is that when I was at church, I started to see more women. Generation X, I started to see more and more single people in church. I was over the singles ministry uh, at three different churches. And one thing that I noticed is that I saw a lot of attractive unmarried women at church. Women's ministry will be packed. One day at Friendship West Baptist Church, Pastor Tony, I, I mean, uh, not Tony Evans, I got the church wrong. Uh, our pastor asked all the single men to stand up. And he had, we had three services, okay? He said, all the single men stand up. And it was about 50 or 70 guys that stood up, right? And then he and he said, okay, now I want all the single women to stand up. And when I tell you, whoo, Pastor Haynes, like, ladies, there they, there they are. And I felt like a, a lion, uh, uh, like a piece of meat on the Serengeti. I was like, what is he doing that for? It was easily eight, 10 to one in that one service, right? And what I started to know, what I started to realize is I'm like, man, the, the single women outnumber the single men in this church by a large margin. Now, what you're going to start to notice is the my, women of my mother's and my grandmother's generation, they moved a heck of a lot different than the women of this generation. Just completely different. 
completely different. And even my grandmother, when she was, you know, in transitioning, she said, I feel sorry for you, baby. He's like, these women today ain't nothing like you know, the, the women I grew up with. And that's the truth. You, you, Anybody who's being honest will say that they have heard that the women today are not like the women of yesteryear. But what I want you guys to hear is I want you guys to hear three different women who don't know each other. But what you're going to hear is you're going to start hearing some you're going to start hearing some uh, similarities. You're going to start hearing some things that you typically, you know, th that it's going to be hard to kind of overlook. Now, we got 739 people in here. Let's get the likes up. I want you guys to, we're going to go back to a show that I did a while back. And I want y'all to pay attention. Let's see if we can hear some similarities. Okay. As far as what? What do you mean? You asked me, did it did it? Am I saying you did the wrong thing by going to get your master's? Uh, I, I'm just going to say, if you know you want to be married, how much? How have you applied the same amount of energy and focus in uh, getting a I husband? Have. Okay. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Well, I got my I got my master's and my bachelor's in my twenties. Okay, but I said in, into finding a husband. Yes. Okay. I find that one difficult to believe because mo so let's go ahead and flesh this out some more. What city are you in? <laughs> I'm in in Dallas. Okay, you're Good in Dallas. Dallas. I and I spent and I spent most of my adult career in Dallas. Black Women, Christian, feminists. I should have put a lot of this tends to happen in the South. Let me tell you what I do know about the women in Dallas, particularly the black women in Dallas. You guys are a pain to deal with. They got a lot oh, of wow. got a lot of sassy sisters who think a lot of themselves, and that's cool. But getting a master's should not hurt you uh, in education. Uh, if you were, do you see non-black women who get education, who, who become educators, who, who are as chronically single as black women? No. So what do you think the difference is if it's not the education? Now, did you say like other races? Did you say yeah. white women? Or did you yeah, say yeah, yeah. Other races, non-black women. So non-black women are not, they get, they can go to, Harvard, they, so they we, can go get a, so they can go get a go master's. The, so we can't go by the statistics that says, you know, um, our chances are slim due to this reason and that reason. And no, you want to, you, you can't go by that. Uh, but by the stats. Are you talking about men being in jail and all this other kind of stuff? Yeah, we, we shouldn't look at that. Well, if if you want to look at that, then we're going to bring it to the fact that I'm going to bring the American Institute, American Enterprise Institute study saying that 51% of black men are single with no children and in the middle class, and 60% of us are in the middle class. It's not a lack of black men, ma'am. You don't think so? No, I lived in Dallas. I was, not, I remember, not I was even hold on, hold on, hold on. I was a member of Friendship West Baptist Church. I was part of the singles ministry. I was part remember of the men's ministry. I know her past. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So there's not a, there's not a problem with the amount of men. Uh, when was the last time, have you ever been engaged? I have been engaged, yes. So why didn't you guys go through with the marriage? Uh, that was early on. Uh, his um, job was going to um, go to another state, mm -hmm. and I wasn't kind of willing to do that. Okay. Why not? And again, that was in my 20s. I was but, 27. But, okay, okay, okay. So and it was you, probably a little bit Hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am. Okay. okay, hold on. Look, we got some here. You were in your 20s, but you it's not like you were 21. You were 27. You were closer to 30. And you said a man proposed and to also, you? Hold on. Were you, really hold on. Were you, were you engaged or, or or you were, he just proposed to you? Pretty much just proposed. 
Okay, and you didn't want to be with him because he was moving and you didn't want to move. And it was other things as well. It was other things, just not that. It was other things. Trust wasn't involved, just a lot of other things as well. So it just wasn't that. All right. So from what I'm hearing, <laughs> you want to be married. I want to be married. But I'm in but my you've had a man, but you've I had have a, no but kids. You, hold on. But you want to be married, but you had a man who wanted to marry you. But you didn't marry he wasn't him. Trustworthy. He wasn't trustworthy. So did he so when he hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So when he proposed to you, or did he actually propose to you? Uh, we talked about marriage. Did he actually propose to you? He didn't get on one knee. Okay, no. so he didn't. Okay. All right. This is the simple. So when he, I want you guys to notice a couple of things. One, a lot of these women, college educated, master's degrees, very well spoken. None of them curse, smile through them. They got that Southern sugary thing. But notice how I'm asking direct questions. The level of deflection, the Federation of Planets would love to equip their starships with these kind of deflector shields. Bing, bing, bing. Deflectors like a mug. And I'm like, can you answer a straight question? He didn't get on one knee, but when, when you talked about marriage, Mm -hmm. and you decided you weren't going to marry him. Was the relationship over that day? It was pretty much going downhill after that. I mean, we've all been in relationships that was not supposed to be. He was that person. And I've, you know, I've been in other relationships. You know, come on now. I've been in relationships, and they wasn't the right one. Okay, I'm going to need uh, everybody to go ahead and donate and help this stream out because you knew good and doggone well YouTube was going to come at this video hard. I'm already getting notifications of uh, demonetization. It ain't been going, I ain't even been going eight minutes yet. This video was hate speech. Insensitivity. I'm like, so uh, if you want the show to continue, you need to pay something for this one. I ain't doing this for my health. Based upon what, ma'am? Uh, just the chemistry wasn't there. Maybe just oh, in it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why do you why do you get married? Why do you get married? Because you you in love with that person? Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. What oh, you love did, that whoa, 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 what church did you say you went to? <laughs> Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Tony Evans. There you go. I know. I know very well. Where does love come into the... <laughs> mm. I mean, I you, can... You, oh, no, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. You called the show. You called the show. See, you, you're, you're a Christian, but you're not living like a Christian woman. No, no. I put it in, I put it in your comments. I want a God-fearing... You're Christian, but not living like a Christian woman. But I put it in the comments. I want a God-fearing man. Da, 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 da. Just get your notepad and start taking bullet points. Start comparing and contrasting. These women don't know each other. And shout out to them. This is not an insult to these women. So I do not want to hear any insults levied towards any of these women. Matter of fact, one of them, I went over to her. She's live streaming. I said, hey, you're going to be a co-star in this show. We don't need to do that. Because it ain't about them. I didn't see the comments. The I didn't see the comments, but I'm, I'm here. Well, I did say that. I did okay. say that. Okay. So, so here's he the, has okay. to be oh, God. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. God fearing Christian. Did you notice how much they okay. over talk a man know? He's I a know Christian what I'm talking woman. about. You. <laughs> see, this is what tends to happen. When a lot of you black women get backed into the corner, you want to over talk a man. That's not going to work. You said you had a man that you wanted to, he wanted to marry you, but there was something wrong with him. Then you said that you've been in relationships with other men, but there's always something wrong with him. And there's been some stuff wrong with me as well. Yeah, so I'm and learning. Sounds, I, and I, I can, I can tell. Show, I can tell. I tune into your show. I can hoping tell. To some I can tell. And if you'll listen, one of the major things that's wrong with what right now is. You are over-talking me. 
why? It's called conversation. So just because they don't curse you out with words, she didn't curse me out many times. Over talking is cursing at you. Talking loud is cursing at you. Snippy, passive aggressive conversation. She called me a motherfucker right there. Yeah, I grew up in the church. I am very well. I, I was baptized at five. Very well versed in what I'm about to go into. Converse. Gentlemen, I need you to understand something. Ladies, I need you to understand something. This is not conversation. You don't over talk. First off, you said you came to my show because you're looking for some answers or something like that. So why would you come to somebody looking for something and then talk over them? I thought we was conversing. I wasn't talking well, over you. That's why I can tell you I, one of the things wrong with so many Generation X black women is you have a you don't have a healthy uh, interaction with black men. You talk over us. You're disrespectful. You're mad in your masculine energy. And even me trying to ask you some questions and I've shown that I know what I'm talking about. Lived in Dallas. I didn't, I didn't even told you your pastor. Trust me. I know plenty about Oak Cliff Bible. Anyway, Go all, ahead. These, you all these men, all of these men, they, they weren't all the problem. And then what it comes right down to tend to be many women your age tend to focus so much on what they want. And when I asked you why it didn't work, you didn't tell me this guy was beating you. He was he was a drug addict. He was an adulterer. You just said the chemistry wasn't there. And what I mean, what, and I'm assuming you mean the physical chemistry. No, we just didn't we just didn't get along. I, it just we just didn't get along. So why were you dating, um, we did, why were we you dating somebody argue. you didn't? So why did why were you even dating somebody you didn't get along with? That, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So during my dating, I learned. You learned. And unfortunately, during my times of dating, you know, YouTube and getting, you know, advice from me and such as yourself, which I thought you would be somebody who I could, get, you know, listen to and kind of get some feedback. But it wasn't around then. So we kind of had to kind of kind of go through those charted waters on our own and try to get, you know, get an understanding. But now with me being 40 in my 40s, um, it's like, you know, I've learned a lot but I'm still learning and I'm willing to uh, open my ears to what, you know, me Where'd and you go to get your master's? Where'd you go to school to get your master's? You probably don't think it. So. What do we learn? Not one curse word uttered. But when direct questions were asked, deflection started. She, this, go back. This stream is entitled, Ladies, can you land a good man? Go back and watch that stream. And I even did a, a, a stream breakdown of this interview. It got to be comical how she refused to answer direct questions. Ding, 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 ding. Defect, you know, Wonder Woman defect the bracelets. All right. Again, sweet sounding. Also feminine and this and this. Also Christian. I want a God fearing man. A da 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 da. Then you go down to relationship history. All all of them didn't have a good man sooner or later. I don't care, man. I don't. I'm just asking. I'm wrong with every last one. Prairie View A&M University. Shout out to Prairie View. What do y'all live? Panthers. Yes. Okay. Um. Did you have to take out student loans to go to school? I took out some, yes. Uh huh. All right. So you did that to get your degree in education. How much? I want anything how much else have you invested into uh, psychological counseling and mental health counseling? For myself? Yes. Uh, I've sought it. I haven't um, did so, it. So zero. I do realize that so it's, zero, it's ma'am. The, the number zero. <laughs> See what? I, what I, to, so I, I need you to listen, ma'am. I need you to listen. I let you talk. So that's what. I, that's all I need from her. So. That's all I need from her. Now, that was at one show. Last night, last night, I had two women on the show that I want to profile. Uh, one was the final woman on the channel. You remember the one that was, let's just hear a little bit of what she has to say. 
let's hear a little bit about what she has to say. Guys, while I'm getting to it, are y'all liking the show so far? Are we getting into it? Really comes down to it is a dangerous thing to. Yeah, are we liking it so far? Again, if you don't understand where we're at, cool. Let's get into last night's show. Um, but you have two children, boy or girl? Let's hear what. Uh, what the hell? Really comes down to it is a dangerous. Last night's show. Let me take the case off of this. You date while you're leveling up, or she just wait till you get to the level and then open the floodgates. Right. There are no. There's not going to be any floodgates. Let's start back. Why is lower earning men? Why would a man who's making a half a million plus match your energy? Okay. And it wasn't until I matched the energy that they I, um, either understand me, communicate with me, or you shutting me out and you really don't care about me. Or let's what I'm get saying. into the question. So however you slice it, he moved for you. So obviously he was where it is. I mean, right. He, all mm -hmm. this other kind of stuff when budgets start some of this stuff i'm outside of my depth do, 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 do. read her she seems like she was the type of individual that a lot of people didn't really um give her a reality check when it was needed if she was ugly could she have gotten where she was in life let's get on into do it you have a question for you because i made a comment and um the backlash that i got it's kind of alarming, so I want to know your advice on this. Okay. All right. So in my past, I have been an individual that has been married, had relationships, and they did not work out simply because I wasn't willing to work anything out after um, their behaviors influenced my decision. Now, at this time, I am much more mature understand i made decisions out of being an emotional wreck and i really wasn't in the right mental space so i call myself leveling up now at this time i do have suitors and individuals that tries to help me but i don't entertain them my question listen to how many times the word suitor and entertain to use in this one would be should I date while leveling up or should I just wait till I get to the top and open up my eyes then? What do, when you say level up, what does that mean? Well, it's just being um, more mature on the levels that I wasn't before. I realized I made a lot of mistakes because of my maturity level. No, no. When you say you're leveling, you asked the question, should I date now while I'm leveling up or should I wait till I've completely leveled up and then open the floodgates? What is leveling up? Leveling up to me, okay, so where I am at this point in my life, I am on the verge of getting approved to open up my insurance agency. Okay. I don't want to, and that to me is, is huge. That's me leveling up financially, but also establishing myself. Okay. Um, I feel at the moment dating would be a distraction. So are you, I talking, are you talking about uh, for like State Farm Farmers or Allstate? Or are you talking about what? Well, State Farm. Farm. Okay. Uh, and State Farm, uh, are you captive? I would be captive, yes. Yeah, I can, I have, I've had my seven, my six, my 63. So let me, so let me ask you, can white women uh, do the same thing you're doing and still have a husband? <laughs> can they do it? In, I don't, um, yeah, well, yeah. I'll tell you what, I haven't seen many that oh, doesn't I have. have a husband. Yeah, I've seen plenty of white women who were married while they were leveling, after they leveled. When, the thing is, black I don't women like tend that. to think that um, uh, four years. And four years, I plan to be making about 450K. All right. And then you would want a man earning how much? I would like a man earning, if not uh, where I am, um, exceeding my income. How tall are you? I'm 5'2. How much do you weigh? 130. Best size? six 
Okay, 52136. And your previous relationships did not work because uh, it was kind of vague, but you weren't willing to do what? I couldn't really understand. It was almost as though it seemed like you didn't have patience for people or you didn't want to do something. What was the reasoning? It didn't work. Um, it's not necessarily uh, didn't have patience. It's more so I will actually, um, I will tell you what's bothering me and mm -hmm. I will give you time to, to correct the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I will communicate, but once I see that you're not trying to um, either understand me, communicate with me, or you shutting me out and you really don't care about me or what mm -hmm. I'm saying, then therefore I just match your energy. Okay. And it wasn't until I matched the energy that they I get it. wanted I get it. to. Do you have any children? I have two. Okay. Uh, and on a scale of one to 10, what would most people say you, you look like? <laughs> I would say a nine to 10. So you're telling me you're a, a, a woman who's either nine or 10 in the face, dress size six, um, and you're going to, your goal is 450,000, so almost half a million in four years, which yes, in the chat room, you can do that with insurance. Definitely. Uh, especially if you own an agency. Yeah, I know you can. I mean, I, I, I know you can, especially if you start selling um, financial products. Um, fair use can't get strike somebody's on your show she is part of my content this is fair use i'm using to make commentary on a subject matter of which i actually have plenty of documentation with participants on my show this was actually acquired from a video clip of this person's channel she sought to be on my channel and would have been live last night anyway i flashed that up just to show what 910 means to women versus me as a man, I'd say six, seven, kind of right around there in that, you know, be Simone. She's definitely not unattractive by any stretch of the imagination. However, as that show went on, what I heard was some of the same things I heard from another woman, the previous woman, uh, you know, my characteristics, my level, my this, my that, I'm this, I'm that somewhat of my standards, my suitors, I'm not entertaining this and that and that. And if you don't know how that ended last night, well, let's go ahead and listen to more. I just P and C. So I know, yes, I, yeah, I, obviously I know. Okay, you want to fill that in for me? Uh, were, you well, what, were you married early? Uh, I've, well, after I um, had my first son, his father and I broke up like after um, he was six months. Okay. And I met my ex-husband six months after that. We were together for um, eight years. We were married five of those eight years. Um, got divorced and then hopped right back into a relationship and had another kid. And I realized uh, a cycle. Right, so let me let me ask you. So let me ask you: the, your, the the first child's father is he alive? He is. Second child's father alive? He is. Are either of those men high earners? Uh, they make under a hundred k. Notice the level of deflection that happens when you ask these Christian women this stuff. Are they high earners? They make under 100K. 20,000 is under 100K, and so is 999,000. Kevin, why are you saying Christian woman? How do you know this woman is a Christian? How do you, that's not fair. Well, let's go. I would say so they're not, not high, my life. So they're not high earners. So they're not high earners. Okay. No. So you had a child out of wedlock married, then another child out of wedlock. I did. All right. Uh, and your ultimate question is all this lev leveling up. Should you date while you're leveling up or should you just wait till you get to the level and then open the floodgates? Right. There are no, there's not going to be any floodgates. 
Now that was her words. Should she wait till she level up or should she date now and then wait till she's leveled up and open the floodgates? As if she can she's can choose because this woman kept on saying how she had all these suitors and all these men who wanted to marry her and all these men and you know five hundred thousand dollar men and all this other stuff. Turns out that none of it was what she was talking about. Go go watch the last 30 minutes. Go watch last night's show. I guarantee you the ending is epic. Now, what I found interesting is I want to play you guys something from, I need you guys to listen to something. Uh, fair use. Fair use, fair use, fair use. What are we doing here? I don't want that to play just yet. Are you guys having a good time so far? Again, we're not dragging anybody. We're going to be polite, okay? Be polite, okay? Keep it polite. I don't need anybody to get rude. This is just for conversation because I have a position. I think a lot of black women, a lot of black women Christians are feminists. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Danny Luba. And it is I, Danny. And as promised, I want to come before you guys to follow up on uh, Fantasia's and her husband's video saying that women should submit to men. Now, of course, I disagree 100%. I believe that no man. Now, her video was talking about how she was responding to Fantasia's video. Remember Fantasia made that all the stir with the submission video? And the woman that I had on my show last night who was talking about opening the floodgates openly said that she thinks Fantasia was wrong about women submitting to men in marriage 100%. Cool. I want you guys to hear what she says. Because I don't want to misrepresent it. So I need to play this in its entirety. And it's about six minutes long. So just listen. Should rule over another man. Now, given we are born and raised and indoctrinated and institutionalized into this patriarchal uh, society. Don't put her name in the chat that room. We live in a society in which men rule everything. Men, the take her name out of the chat room. And in this society, I want um, you know how to put it in there. Social order, uh, men also rule women. And I say indoctrinated because uh, the majority of us are Christians or religious people, and in so many religious texts, it says you know women are beneath the men and or a man is the head and all this craziness so basically now remember all this craziness all this craziness women are beneath the head all this craziness no 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 oh uh, you're not a youtuber i have two videos posted on youtube that's the youtuber what it is i disagree because i think but you're more than, hold on but you're more than welcome to uh when i have the call in portion you're more than welcome because i want your words because you put it out there it's public video but i'm not playing the video i'm just playing the words because i don't want it to be misinterpreted I, but i think it's a good bookend for the conversation that we had yesterday Y'all should go watch that. Women and men together equals balance. I don't believe that a woman is equal to a man, and I don't believe that a man is equal to a woman. I believe that they both have their place um, in each other's lives. I believe that the woman is like myself. I'm a woman. I am the manifestation in the flesh of the divine feminine aspect of God and he my man or 
for the men. It's the uh, manifestation in the flesh of the uh, divine masculine part of God, right? So there's a balance there. You can't have one without the other. And they both balance each other out. Wrong, ma'am. You can't have one without the other. When Adam was created, he was created with woman and man together. See what a lot of these new wave Christian feminists, they not they want they're convenient Christians. What you're going to notice is a lot of them will talk about God, Christianity, quote scripture, speak in, you know, these spiritual terms, but then turn around and lace it with feminist doctrine. We're equals balance and there's nothing in the bible about equality or balance you can't have one without the other the bible would disagree please show me where it says that what you're saying is true but unfortunately so many of our women in church have begun to blend christianity with feminist doctrine to become feminist christians and uh, I feel in that video, uh, Fantasia's husband, and I don't know his name, but he says that basically because he prays to God and he seeks the face of God, that qualifies him to have her submit to him. He doesn't say that. God says that. Check your eggs. Check your Bible. Again, I get it. I get it 100%. I get that our Bibles tell us that the man is the head. I get that little cliche about the woman being a neck and she turns the head wherever she wants it to go. I get all of that. But at the same time, you have to understand, we are raised in a patriarchal society. Yes, you're raised in a patriarchal society. Yes, and let's go ahead and get into this. First off, notice how she keeps the passive-aggressive sneak this way. She talks about submissive femininity. I get the little cliche that it's this and it. Just minimizing the divine feminine that you're supposed to be part of. But I want you guys to listen to what Edward Anderson, BGS, a lot of people start talking about the patriarchy and the matriarchal mindset. I need you guys to pay close attention to this part here. That's why I didn't want to use my words. I wanted her to say it in her own words as a black woman, Christian, feminist. Meaning a, the social order that's over our heads that governs us is one in which men rule over women, children, animals, everything. Men, men, men. They are the rulers of this social order. Now there's... True. Men rule over the women, children that are rulers of the social order. What she fails to include is they also are the ones who create, build, protect, and restore this thing. Women have never built an Amazon, an Amazonia. So this very patriarchy that so many of our black women throw their nose at, you're more than comfortable to sit nest in it and sh wave your finger at it. Also a matriarchal uh, society or social order in which women are the head. And it's so funny and ironic because in every, I won't say every, but I would say maybe 90% of African-American families, we all go to Big Mama's house celebrate something or the woman you go to big mama's house because y'all why because da big daddy's dead why do black men die earlier than any other men ooh, ooh. but did big mama buy the house because my, my my grandmother my grandfather bought the house see big mama had big daddy and big daddy bought the house he just died 20 years before big mama like so many other black men who work themselves to a, into death so their wives can have it left. But all you see is Big Mama's house. 
Now, Big Mama talked about Big Daddy all the time. That's why his big picture was sitting up there. That's why you couldn't sit in his chair even after he was dead. That's why you couldn't sit at the head of the table even after he had passed. It's the head of the household, meaning the whole family looked towards that great grand woman, that matriarch of the family. I think. Lie. She was the only one left alive. Because the black men were dead from doing their damn job. You hear this twisting of history? That's why I wanted you guys to hear it from her words because now it makes sense all that stuff about on my level and this and that and da da da. Go back and listen to what she was saying. It all starts to blend. I was like, oh, God works in mysterious ways. That because we are indoctrinated and we are all conditioned in a way that we see men being powerful and being authority figures in our lives. I believe um, that also train our mind to think and feel like we need a man to rule over us, but we don't. I believe in Catch that? We have been raised and indoctrinated and trained our minds to believe as though we need a man to rule over us, but we don't. Is that not feminism 101? Now, ma'am, you're raising two boys. When I asked, was that $500,000 man that you want to come in there to marry you that you weren't going to give a kid, could he even whoop those children he got to pay for? You said no. When I asked, would those kids realize that the stepfather who has to pay for everything like the baby daddies, he has to pay like he's a biological, but he has no biological rights that child, are those kids going to be able to figure it out? Yes. So you'll have a neutered male in your house and be raising a bunch of what? Men who look up to Big Mama? 100% um, acknowledging that the in, in many areas, the man can lead a woman and um, also acknowledging that the woman can lead a man. It's a Working ladies, man, please, in the chat room, list me five areas in which a woman can lead a man. Five, five areas, I'm going to back there, five areas in which a woman can lead a man that actually make a difference to society. Leading him in, in certain areas is okay. Because I can name you plenty of ways a man can lead a woman that make a difference to her and society. Just give me five. And by the way, name me five female inventors and I'll give you one. Madam Curie, give me four. Name me five great female inventors. Name me five great women throughout arts, science, history that has nothing to do with literature. Name me some great female scientists, thinkers, philosophers. Balancing act. Um, just because you are a man and that's your gender, that does not necessarily mean I should submit to you. And then the act of submission is to give in, to give up who you are, to allow yourself to basically be led by someone else. Like the act of submission. I want you. I want you to say that again for you. The, tomorrow's show. Is submission losing? I want you to hear it again. Someone else, like balancing act. Um, just because you are a man and that's your gender, that does not necessarily mean I should submit to you. And then the act of submission is to give in, to give up who you are, to allow yourself to basically be led by someone else, like you. Let that marinate. That's what submission is to her and far too many black Christian women.
the act of submission, which is commanded in the Bible, that you say you follow and the faith that you voluntarily believe in <laughs> to give in, give up. It's losing. It's a lack of power. Edward, have a field day with it. Enjoy Edward. Let Edward, Hurricane Edward, call in Hurricane Edward. You're on. Have no power of your own. That to me is the most when a woman submits, she has no power of her own. That's just weakness. That's what you said, ma'am. That's why I, I'm glad it's here so I don't have to make this shit up. The submission is weak. Acknowledging someone's leadership abilities in areas and allowing someone to lead um, is not the act of submission that's different so i believe again that it's a bull i don't believe men should rule over women because basically that's what submission is i don't believe that men should rule over anything i would say anyone no men should not rule men put it that way i don't believe men should rule over women i don't believe women should rule over men i don't believe anybody should rule anybody so understand something that our strong, educated, intelligent Christian black women like her who reject femininity and submission because it's weakness and just becoming a shell. No one should rule anybody. We should have hands off. I would love, love to be able to give you the tricoder and go like that and snap you into a world to where it was anarchy like that. I would love for you to experience it for 30 days to where there's nobody ruling over anybody. Everybody's just equals. Yeah. You got a piece of chicken? I want that chicken. You gonna take me out? What you gonna do? I want the chicken. You gonna call the police? Oh no, nobody's ruling over anybody. Hell, uh, nobody's ruling over anybody. No, it's just we're back in the caveman days. That's what y'all want. That's that's how extreme it is for these black female Christian feminists. And I say men as a collective body of people. Um, men should not rule over men. And that's where we get this whole, the man is the head, the man, the man, the man. Don't you hear a lot of K. Michelle in that? I think men are just bad people. That's where we get all this, men is the head, the man, the man. No, ma'am, it's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. So you want men to build the world and then you want them to give it over to you. Which is why so many of you are by yourself. And at the same time, we are fighting for women's rights. So you can't have it both ways. You have to understand the systems in which we live in, the social orders in which we live in. You have to break them down and decode them to understand why you think the way that you do. For me, I would love 100% to be led by a man. But I would also love for the man to be led by me in areas that I don't go to him. The balance in it. When it is my time to lead, it's my time. When it's your time to lead, it's your time. When it's, and I say lead because that's just what it is. Um, and I want to talk about this submission. What exactly are we doing here? All right, that's yeah. it. That's it. Lord have mercy. I couldn't have written a better prologue. So what I need you to hear is uh, she at least had the guts at least to say it and didn't blink. Now, all the stuff she was talking about, she wanted yesterday. But this is how she ultimately feels about men. I love to be led by men who leads the way I think he should lead. But you can't discipline my children, but you got to take care, but you got to pay for them. All right, before we get to the next part, 
I don't want anybody to be throwing that woman's name around. If I want her name out there, if she wants to self-identify, that's her business. But it is a public video. And the problem is, these are women, whether she's a self-professed Christian or not, she's talking about Christianity in the Bible. How often do you hear women talking about this equality? I, didn't I? I had someone on the show last week talk about a man's not superior to a a, a, a woman. No, nobody's superior. I mean, you. Let me get let the ladies in on a secret. No amount of verbal voodoo is going to change the fact that men, you're the weaker vessel. Why do you black women, fem, you black female Christian feminists, struggle so much with this very Bible you say you believe and this God you say you follow? All right. Equality, 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 equality. Now you can stand firm what you said. Everybody's entitled to be 100% foolish and wrong. Stand in your ignorance. Own your ignorance. But ain't going to be no floodgates coming for you. That's why you that's why I hung up on you last night cuz you a liar. A liar, a fake and a fraud. All these half a million dollar men who are suiting and enter, and I'm not entertaining them. And it turns out that neither one of your BDs is on child support, and they both low lower earning men. And the dude you're dealing with ain't even making five thousand dollars a month. F out of here. Go listen to that show. Thank say thank you in advance for the comedy hour. I can't make this shit up. I know she'd be back tonight. Cause she made she made such a good showing last night, and while, and one thing I will say that some women, like the next woman, I think there's there's some of these women that can actually be talked off the ledge, and some are just too far gone. But what we're seeing is outside of my personal editorial, my opinion, those are just mine, femininity. I mean, uh, feminism and Christianity are diametrically opposed doctrines. You cannot talk about ERA and equality and then a Christianity. What is it? You want a world where you're equal? Then make sure you get ERA. But then you get your butt out there and we need equal representation. We need 51% of the women to be on the police department, the fire department, the military, construction rigs, trash collectors, all the dirty, funky jobs. We're going to need to see 51% of those with women. And they have to be done to the level that men did them. No child support. No government assistance. Because it will be unconstitutional. I hope you get the equality you asked for. Certainly, certainly do. All right. So we've been going at this for about 71 minutes. And um, we started off with a one woman that you've heard before. Then the next one, which is probably the most extreme and easy to point out. But what I want you to notice is some things. You're hearing a lot of the same doctrine. Me, 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 me. Equal, 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 equal. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I don't need nobody to tell me nothing. I'll let you lead. I'm single by choice. <laughs> Remember the show I did it was single by choice, 30, over 30 attractive, single by choice. Right. The next person, shout out to you. Um, I, I think women like this are the most interesting ones. Uh, and, and, and I will say this. I don't want to get too much into my commentary, but I want to play the next part. I do not want anyone insulting Tiffany. I said, yep, yep. If I see you talking crazy about Tiffany, I'm going to time you out. Say nothing. She was not rude. You don't have to like what she says, but she was not rude. And the first lady, honestly, really wasn't rude either. The middle lady wasn't rude. There's no reason to be rude to these people. You can have your opinions, but keep keep the ad hominems because you didn't have a conversation with her. I had conversations with these people. I can see it. You have no reason to. 
All right. So last night, this is what happened. Are we doing good? Let me go ahead and check the looks on likes on the channel. Guys, we need to get the likes up to over 900. We got over 1,400 people in here. Uh, let me do some, uh, let me do a quick station identifications. Shout out to some people. Do me a favor. I'm going to turn on slow mode in the chat. I need you guys to let me know where you are hailing from. Where are you hailing from? City, state, city and gender. How about that? City and gender. Where you be, where you be, where you be. Uh, let me give me a little something to drink before we play part two and then we open the call in log. But let's get back to my favorite piece. Call in log. Erica, you're up tonight. Let's get into this part. Part three, last night's show. Let's get it. I Hopefully that lady was young enough to where she can go ahead and make a change. All right. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think any, I don't have any malicious intent. Right. And, you know, I'm a, I'll put it this way. I'm a cancer survivor. And when, the, when my doctor, when I got my diagnosis back, one of the first questions I asked him was uh, the, the remission rates and the, and, the, and the prognosis. And I respect them that they didn't lie to me because you got to make real choices. And, and the situation that she was in, well, we're all in, is that we don't, if we have our information, the truth, then we can make choices. So... That's what it is. So well, thank congratulations you. to you. God bless you for going through that. So uh, what's your, your, your name in the chat room is, was what? Was it Tiffany, Tiffany Look, Chanel? Tiffany Chanel. Okay. I, okay. I saw mm -hmm. people talking to you. I'm the, the one that came in the chat and I was so excited about the topic of being over 30 and, <laughs> mm. and mm. single. And um, yeah, that was me. So, so are you over 30? <laughs> I am. Are you, are you looking to get married yourself? Um, I've been married. Uh, currently, I'm not looking to get married. Are you looking for an LTR? Long-term relationship? Long-term relationship? Oh, not currently. I'm currently not looking for a long-term relationship, but um, I'm open to friendship. And if that leads, that would be, that would be great. Uh, now, that is curious to me. I'm going to tell you why I'm curious. Okay. As a divorcee myself, there was a cooling off period. Mm -hmm. uh, but most women I know don't want to die alone. Yeah. Um, are, are we saying that you just want to go through the rest of life unattached? That's a good question. I don't think I'm saying the rest of life unattached. Um, I just think um, I'm finally able to focus on other things outside of relationships. Okay. Um, you know, things that are important to me, my career, um, my household, my daughter. And okay. so, yeah. How old is your daughter? My daughter will be four in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, well, everybody comes to it at a different point, but one thing I, I would love to hear more black women be able to do mm -hmm. is to be able to have healthy relationships because here's what I here's what I hear more often when I hear from black women mm -hmm. uh, or women in general black women in particular when I ask you if you want to be in a relationship it's still comparing it against the negative versus the positive what it can be I mean you got a four-year-old um, and you may have a great career 
but it's always easier in life to go through it with support, help. So why not have support, help, healthy, happy relationships versus nothing? That's actually a beautiful, a beautiful point. Um, my parents have been married for 48 years. My grandparents were married for over 65 years. Do you before want that? they transitioned? And they, they're happy, and it's beautiful. See, now I have to ask the question. We can all say what we want, but 65-year married grandparents and 48-year married parents, the vast majority of people want relationship like that. That's why I asked the question. Do you want that? Now, I, again, notice... When I start asking direct questions, notice the answers don't come back direct. Do you and want that? I think, oh, so if if that exists for me, yes. See, see, but see, if it does see, not, there it go. There it goes. That's okay. Okay, okay. There it goes. You came from sixty five years and forty eight years. If it exists for you. Why did why if you come from 65 and 48, why would it not exist for you? No, meaning if it exists for me. I know. It why would it not them. exist? I, I, I know. That's why I said, why could it not exist for you? I think the this is the Christian feminist balancing act that is so obvious to men like myself. But I don't think a lot of these women realize that they have competing, opposing ideologies. If it exists for me, but you're going to hear in a minute that I want to live life according to God's perfect will. And God has made his will pretty well known. It's not unclear. You know, whatever God's plan is, you know, I'm, I want to be that person that's open to what God has for me and not try to chase after something. Okay. So are you a Christian? Chase. I am. Are you a practicing Christian? When you say practicing, what do you mean? Like, are you living, um, are you living in accordance to the Christian, are you living by the Bible? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Very important distinction. Are you a Christian? Yes. Are you a practicing Christian? What do you mean? I, I clarify it. Are you living accordance and then by the Bible? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Everything from this point on flows through that affirmation. That's why all the questions from this point on flow from. All right. Now, so, am, I, am I perfect? No, 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 none of crisis. us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Yeah. But I ran the singles ministry in three churches I was in. That's and, awesome. Yeah, and there's nothing in the Bible where God has anything about a spouse. This is a natural choice. Okay. In the black community, we put this off as a spiritual matter. Like I'm living a court. I have a show about three weeks ago where I had a woman, I actually know her pastor. And she kept on talking about how she's a good Christian woman. And, and I asked her, and at the end of the day, go back and watch the show. It's actually highlighted. Oftentimes, okay. oftentimes black women get to a point to where we, I'm just being honest. You don't believe it's possible. I don't believe it's possible. It was that what your grandparents and your parents had, that time is over. The world is different. So now God is my husband. A lot of people don't believe that, but that's an important distinction. Oh no, that's not. If nah. I'm not seeing you, it, I'm saying oftentimes that becomes black women, because. Oh you, no, yeah, that's not good. Well, no, no, that's why I said if 65 years and 48 years, you have good role models. Mm -hmm. The world has not changed. Human beings are still the same. Yep. And I hate this. I hate to hear when people have had bad experiences and to think, well, I'm just going to leave it in God's hand. God don't work that way, sis. That has never been God's way. 
Marriage is a natural choice because if it worked that way, then God would be responsible for you. Were you married? Were you married to your uh, daughter's father? Her, her daughter's father? Hello? Okay, I can hear you now. So I said, were yes, you married to your daughter's father? We were married. Okay, yes. so, if, so if, if it worked the way you're talking, God would be responsible for your divorce. I think man has their own will, man and woman, mankind. Right. So great. So saying work. So what you're saying is not. Then that that contradicts it. You're waiting for what God has for you. But then you say man and woman have their own will. That mm -hmm. means. God has his God has his perfect will for your life. Right. And but none of that has to do with picking a spouse. I think that has to do with every. God has his perfect will for your life. Thank you, Edward. He's charging to God. See, I, I've heard this so often with black Christian women. Injecting feminists, I, in, injecting this. It's all up to God. God has his perfect will for your life. And he's made it pretty clear. And then when you ask him a, a specific question, again, with the generalities. Thanks. No. You can think that, but there's nothing in Go back to that. Lynn, he's not going to override with it, your will. Exactly. Came from 65 years and four Override it, your will. Exactly. God would be responsible for your divorce. I think man has their own will. Man and woman. Mankind. Right. So, great. So, saying work so what you're saying is not then that that contradicts it you're waiting for what god has for you but then you say man and woman have their own will that means god has his god has his perfect will for your life right and, and but none of that has to do with picking a spouse i think that has to do with everything no you can think that but there's nothing in the the tenets of Christianity, you sit down with your pastor and I'm, if he's actually went to seminary, he'll tell you, you have an incorrect interpretation of the gospel. Again, if it's meant for me, God will bring me my husband. No. And these ladies have heard pastors tell them this is not how it works. They have to still say it. Ma'am, I said I taught three. I taught for many years in singles ministry, and I was being married. That's an incorrect interpretation that oftentimes black women have. Marriage is a natural choice, not a spiritual. Marriage choice. is a choice. I do believe that in yes. every aspect of your life, God has His perfect will for you. That's in mm -hmm. your career. Did he have? A, does he have His perfect will for Adam and Eve? He did. God has his perfect will for everything. Your career, ask your pastor, he'll tell you, God ain't worried about your career. I'm worried about if you get the, that report completed by Friday. But I firmly believe that, I said this on Instagram earlier. Let me tell you something. A lot of you black men that want to be married, your wife is in church right now. And she married, and, and she's one of these black female, uh, black female Christian feminists. Why is the why is the black murder rate so low? Because we got so many single women in church doing this. God's got it all waiting for me. Instead of saying, you know what, God gave me a mind, and He gave me this text is not saying what it said, and I've been told this way. You know what, I need to do like the sister said the other day. I put all this focus into my career. And getting my getting ahead in these reports, I need to put that much energy or more into finding me a husband. Instead of just saying it's all up to God and God has it for me, it's bull crap. That is Christian feminist ideology. It makes you not responsible. So if it doesn't happen, it wasn't meant for me. God didn't have it for me. No, no. And that's what we're gonna cook on tonight. No, ma'am. No. And then they made the adamant, the, and the, no ladies, no, not just you. No. If you believe that, please be prepared to get on. 
please be prepared to call into the show and explain where that says that in the Bible. They have their own. Did they have their own will? Absolutely, and they he's act, not going to override it, your will. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, I we think put, we agree, Kevin. We well, agree. Well, we we agree. <laughs> we agree up to the point to where we or Mr. Put, Samuel. Sorry, I don't know. No, what no, no was, Kevin is cool. You. We agree to the point to where we push this off onto God's perfect will for us. That is where I wholeheartedly disagree. And that is where you first came. I said, what about this? And you say, oh, I'm, I'm going to let God have it in his time. No, ma'am, that's not how it works. I just, I guess my goal is I don't want women to think that if. Pay attention. Pay attention to this right here. Enter the Christian feminist. Wow! They're not getting a man. It's something always wrong with them. Sometimes it's just their choice, and that's okay. Okay. What is a woman's purpose? I believe a woman and a man's purpose is to serve and honor the Lord with their lives. Okay. I asked a very specific question. Mm -hmm. You're a Christian. What is a woman's purpose? What the, the deflections have been going. What is a woman's purpose? I believe a woman and a man. Remember the first caller. Every time I ask a specific question about this, she would tie it in with a man. This remember about the C.J. King and the the whole juxtaposition lady. And every time I would ask her a question, she always would tie it back to the it's feminism. You got to link a man in it and deflect. It's like a freaking playbook. I don't even think they realize they're doing it because you've been doing it so long. What is a woman's purpose? You're a Christian, remember? This is this is supposed to be easy. This came in the Christian starter kit. This information came in a Christian starter kit. Remember in the kindergarten we had them that big pencil with the big eraser and the you know the big old crayon. This came in the Christian starter kit. You know what this is. A woman's purpose is to serve the Lord with her life. That is not how a she woman. lives her life. That is not a woman honoring God. That is not a woman's purpose, according to okay. Christianity or the Bible. It's very clear. A woman's purpose. Are you is talking to, about submitting to husband? No, husband a woman's purpose to... is to be helpmate to man. Your purpose oh, be is, the helpmate. Okay. Your, your purpose, I, your, a I woman's. Uh, okay, so in the in the simple terms, a woman's purpose is man in Christianity. You have no purpose without a man here. If you did, God could have easily created. Eve before Adam. God gave Adam the commandments and he put him in charge of the garden. He spoke to Adam. Did God ever speak to Eve? Adam was in authority. So he he spoke to Adam. The answer directly is no. Here goes the deflection. Oh. Was the helpmate. He pulled her from Exactly. His rib so so you said you don't want women to him. think you want you don't want women to think that you don't want women to think opposite of what it is you say you believe. No, I don't want women to think that there's something wrong with them always. There can be things that are wrong, but it's not always that it's something wrong with the woman, and it's not always that there's something wrong well, with the man. Well, ma'am, ma'am, but the thing is, hold on, but this whole wrong, what is a woman's purpose on the planet? Okay, how about this? How about this, Nicole? Uh, Tiffany, can a woman survive yeah. on the planet by herself? Well, I've seen it happen. <laughs> Where? It's always funny to me when you ask a very simple question to watch the cognitive break, the way they know that if they answer the question, they're going to make, they're going to make themselves, they answer the question directly. They're going to contradict themselves. Human beings have a switch in us that makes us want to be correct. 
or consistent. So these, when a woman is doing this, she's having to physically jump over the, the consistency switch. And that's ego. <gasps> Can a woman survive on this planet by herself? Uh, I've seen it happen before. Now I want you guys to understand the logical gymnastics and all the things she's going to have to fill in to make this thing she's about to say true. When you know the essence of the question. Again, no cursing, no raising your voice. Passive aggressive. Deceptive. Lie by omission. So where? if you ask where, him, where, 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 I've seen single women live and be single uh, until they're older and they don't, hold on, they hold on, hold on, stop, 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 stop. You've seen a woman take care of and provide for herself. Yes. Did she build her own shelter? Yes. Built. Did she build her own shelter? I, I set it up. You've seen a woman take care of and provide for herself. Well, I said I've seen a woman take care of herself. I've said that a woman can survive on the planet here by herself. So I have to keep I have to keep going with this lie. I can't as I can't I can't I'm I'm too into this ego struggle. I'm too into being right. I can't give him the fact that I I got to I got to stick to it. And I'm going to tell you this dry, this is one of the reasons so many black men have left the church. They are tired of dealing with Christian women like this and personally to you Tiffany, but they're tired of dealing with Christian women like this because this is you, you're supposed to have a a different set of, of, of behaviors. You're seeing the same ratchetness and silliness in the churches you see on the street. You used to go to church to get a good girl. Now you go to church to get even more problems. Did she build a shelter herself? Now, everybody, all 1,429 of y'all know exactly, or 1,422, 27 of y'all, because Tiffany probably in there, and then Danny probably in there just throwing stones at me. She ain't going to agree with me. Everybody in there know exactly what I was asking. Did she physically build that shelter by herself? Did she get out there and cut the wood, get the stones, everything else? And she said, yes. In such a sweet, simple, like, yes. I'm doing the, I'm doing the Jedi mind trick on you. You ain't Obi-Wan fuck you think this is nothing to see here move along <laughs> look at this <laughs> her house she built her own home mm -hmm. did she actually run the plumbing to that home oh i see like hiring people or did she run the plumbing come on uh, tell, tell me what i'm saying what i'm what i'm plumber. what i'm saying that's why i asked you very definite see Oftentimes, women use Christianity as convenient, convenient Christians. A woman's purpose is a man. No, no two ways about it. Women cannot survive without men. You are not physically capable. You don't have the strength. Your body's not built for it. You cannot do it. So to say women can survive without men is telling women the wrong thing. And as a Christian, that's why I asked if you're a Christian, you're, you're, you're actually telling women something that goes opposite to what you say you believe do you think a woman should enter in a relationship and stay if a man is abusive now i asked about simple fundamental questions here goes the gas light the, the typical again christian woman you think a woman should stay in a relationship where man is beating her uh, and setting her hair on fire and cutting her toenails with chainsaws and, 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 and sticking a hot poker in her ear and, 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 and cutting her fingers with a blender 
and 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 really that's basically what she asked me let me ask you such a ridiculous question that you have to say yes so what i can start again this, this is too simple ask you a question that you have to say yes to so you can try to build on those yeses no but you don't answer those questions you just call them out what does that have to do with christianity my point is that some women have have had this happen well, okay but, but this was an attempt to change the subject because she was it was in it was in contradiction and opposition to her state of belief system feminism see christianity is about the gospel the gospel of jesus christ the truth and there's nothing about this as christian this is just bull crap and guys raise your hands in the chat room if you run across educated cool sisters who are attractive who are christians who who, are, who act like this who are feminists any man in the chat room, please, if you run across these black women, Christian feminists and your personal life, your professional life at church, raise your hands. I'm going to tell you, I stopped going to church. I was going to church four to five days a week, and I haven't been to church in years because I can't take it anymore. Can't take when you got butch uh and studs coming in there what whoa where are we at man just we tell but her but to but stay with but the tiffany, man but do respect tiffany i could pull out i could pull out we could go that tit for tat all night we really could yeah i'm not I, I, what, I, what, I, what i'm not okay what i'm not okay with what i'm not okay with is christian women telling women that they don't need a man. I'm not okay with that. If you're a Christian woman and you say you're living in accordance to the Bible, then there's no way you can say that. Yeah, I'm not trying to say, oh, you don't need a man, do everything by yourself. What I'm saying is, don't feel bad and feel like you're doing something wrong if you're currently not with a man. It's okay. Feminist, idea again, I don't women I don't want women to feel bad or like you're doing something wrong if you're not currently with men. It's okay. Where do, where do they say that in Christianity? Where is that in Christianity? Tiffany, Tiffany directly to you. Where is that in the Bible? Ask your father. That is feminism. I don't want you to feel like something that is wrong, like something's wrong. I don't want you to feel what you can see and live. I don't want you to feel bad that you say you're a Christian woman and you're going to live according to these tenets, but you, yet you're walking around uncovered without a man and you got babies. I want you to be a baby mama, a single mother, and sit in church just fine and comfortable. Sorry, we got too much of that. Oh, we are going to cook tonight. Cook. This is out of control. Hey, maybe one day, but maybe not today. And it's maybe okay. one, but okay, but hold up. Okay, maybe one day, but maybe not today. But until, but who is that woman under? Who is she submitting to? Well, she needs to be submitting to the Lord. Right. Through who? But if she's, who's covering that woman when she's by herself? Because a father is a because here's how the you, angels you, see that right there. That was a fuck you. That was a Christian girl way of saying fuck you. Who is that one? Who is who is that woman submitting to? She's supposed to be submitting to the Lord, but the answer is through who? See, while she goes from her father, she's supposed to go to her husband. But now since you've got free choice in the mating market, you can go through the world. But see, Christianity doesn't care about 
uh, government to man. Christianity ain't asking you anything about the government. I mean, he ain't asking you about the, your right to vote or none of that stuff. God ain't care about that. We, it, Christianity survived many, gov many uh, governmental systems. You, me, we decide to be Christians. So basically you're saying a bunch of women are uncovered. Who are they submitted to? They're supposed to not father. And the father not who's supposed to be the priest. That's who you're supposed to be submitting to for a temporary period. And then the elder women of the church. That's who you're supposed to be with under the priest and the elder women of the church. That's where the single women are supposed to go. Let's talk. But you're not supposed to be just, I'm just submitting to Christ by myself. You're not a nun. And there's a clock on that. And then you say, who's covering her? And the truthful answer, a real truthful Christian should have given me, she's uncovered. But you got to make it to where there's nothing wrong with it. Well, I can't I can't say that there's something wrong with a, a woman that is a Christian woman who's not actually be covered under a man's authority. So the angels. That's what she basically said to me. Guys, how many times have you done that with Christian women, Christian black women? Ask them a question that you know and you both know the answer to and they refuse to give it to you. Gentlemen, how many times have you asked a black Christian feminist an answer that you and her both know that, that it's indisputable, but she refuses to give it to you? That ain't nothing but ego. <laughs> well, well, and, that, and, 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 and you know what? And the, and the extension of God is my husband. See, no matter how you slice it, that's still your position. Well, I think this God is, is this my is, everything. God well, is my Well, that's fine, everything. but he is, but, but, but see, this is not, but even T.D. Jakes, he used to, and I want to be clear, this is not about Tiffany. So I know how we can get in. This is not about Tiffany, but this is who's talking right now. It's an avatar. These women are avatars for these things. Now, Danny, I'm going to tell you in there, uh, I've, enough. Your sector, your segment is over. This ain't the Danny show. So, uh, cause I, cause I used your video. It's not for you to come over here and show out. So participate like anybody else. Stop engaging people. If you don't like what they saying, uh, cause I'm about ready to time you out. This ain't your channel. get angry with his with the members of his church because too often women were taking this bastardization of Christianity and actually making this a problem. You know, often, you know, often T.D. Jakes actually said in the church, do not go quote me in your house to your husband. And how yeah, often, I love Bishop Jakes. He's, well, exactly. And how awesome. often women misinterpret the scripture because it's not your place. See, if you're a Christian woman, you know your purpose is a man. Everything God has told you is in, in conjunction with a man. So what you're saying is opposite to Christianity. That is worldly. That's why I asked you initially, are you a Christian living according to the tenets? And you're I not. am. But you can't be and hold these positions. You're, you're, living in contra, you're living in opposition to God's will for man and woman. Simple as that. Yeah. Go ask your pastor. Go ask anybody. My dad is my pastor. Okay. <laughs> and and what is? He? Did you hear that piece? Dad's a pastor. No excuse. Dad's a pastor. He's been married to mom for forty eight years and grandparents for sixty five years. Tell you. So we we're raised in a house where it's husband and wife. Exactly. And uh, my mom has just helped me. Okay, so, but yeah, what is my, your what dad. is your what what does he tell you a woman's purpose is? Yeah, so I, I see people saying that I'm using God as an excuse, and that's I don't just, care about the chat room. My... The question was, what is your father, who's a pastor, and who raised you and taught you, and is your pastor tell you? You notice how conveniently she just deflected that question. Didn't want to just say, I'm, a, I'm not listening to my father or my pastor. 
I'm not going to say what they said because if I do, I know you know what he told me, but I can't answer that question. Ooh, look at the bird. Nothing to see here. Move along. Jedi mind trick. Wow. Heart Tiffany, look at look, and Tiffany, I didn't come Tiffany, on Tiff, here Tiffany, that. Tiffany, Tiffany, don't look at this. They say I'm doing this and I'm going, now is this right? They're, they're, they're saying this, they're saying that. <laughs> it didn't work. I'm supposed to see what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to put on my cape and say, no, 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 don't say that. And she's a good, do, 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 do. no, I stayed right on the path. I ain't, I didn't care about this. Cause I wasn't even looking in the chat room. People can only respond to what we say. They're not making stuff up. They're just listening to what we say. That room. We, you and I. Yeah, I didn't come on here to be well, bashed. Well, I but, came on who here. Are you? Hold on, Tiffany. Who, who is, who is bashing? Tiffany, listen. You've not been bashed by me. Don't look at the chat room. <laughs> you and I are having a conversation that can benefit women. See, what I understand from a lot of you women is I need some of you, I need you ladies to get a council together and define what bash means. Because far too many of you women throw this word bash away around uh just it's a generic throwaway word. You use bash for any speech you want shut down. Whether it fits or not. I've said the truth. In the nicest way possible, I've had people tell me I bash women. But yet they can't tell me what it was. I don't care what people in the chat room are saying. We're having a conversation. I didn't bash her. I'm just asking, just talking. Just trying to understand why, why are so, you know what the real core question is? Why are so many attractive black Christian women unmarried? That's the question that bothered me the most, that, that has, would not nagged at me for so long. I go into church and see so many straight up fine sisters, fine, fit, in shape, just cold. Waste, lost waste. I'm like, God, dog, this and single as Frankenstein. I'm like, why are all y'all? This is like manna. Just, just honey after honey after honey. Potter's house to Friendship West to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Didn't matter. We just went all around. The country. Just Lord have mercy. Oh, whoop, ski we Z Fire and whatever Jess G Rose does. Just like God. Lee got the little church hat on, the little pencil skirt and the heels. Hey, how you doing? Got the Bible and it's smelling good. And you're like, God. And you go out on one date with them and you hear this. I am woman. Hear me roar. The number's too big to ignore. I'm like, oh, I see. You want a traditional man, but you want to be a modern woman. Oh, okay. So I'm supposed to go out and do what the, you know, God's people did against the Philistines and everything else, but you want to live life right along. Okay, I get it. All right, all right, got it, got it. Have I been disrespectful to you? No, not at all. Have I have I been rude to you? No. So what no, do you, I don't. I don't think to, you're a rude person. I listen to so what, what you say what I'm to saying, the ladies. What I'm saying. What I'm saying is you focus here and all i'm doing is questioning what it is you say because here, let me tell you the problem i have with some of the things you said far too often black women are uncoupled because of a misunderstanding of christian doctrine bingo and that's why i asked what does your pastor say because if you're a christian you're supposed to be in submission to someone a yeah. father if you're a Christian woman, you're supposed to be submitted to someone. How many of you Christian women are in submission to a man? Not your husband, then your father, then your pastor. Some You're supposed to be in submission to someone. The elder women of the church, where are you? Because if you were, you'd be married. Because when you get under submission, you tend to get under control, get right, 
start thinking and making right decisions, start end up making decisions in line with what God has for you, not what this world has for you. All this stuff, I don't want women, all this, a lot of stuff you've been, was, these women say a worldly stuff and wonder why relationships don't work. You can say you're a Christian, but if you're going to act worldly, it don't make no difference. Husband. Even in a holding, the men of the men of the church somewhere, women my, are not. My pastor says that a man should not be without a wife and that the wife yeah. is to be the helpmate and that the wife is to submit to the husband and the husband also submit. To but the you wife said you don't want women to think to that there's another. something wrong with her if she's not with the man. And that's just because I think there's a lot of pressure on individuals. As it should. I think there's a lot of pressure. We are talking about a religious belief system. There's supposed to be pressure to believe. What the French toast are y'all talking about, you Christian feminists? There's pressure. Yes. Wide is the way. Wide is the path. Narrow is the way. Remember? Balancing on the head of a pin. Remember? There's supposed to be pressure to get into the kingdom of heaven. Everyone ain't going to make it. Remember? Noah, the flood, remember? It's pressure. Pressure. That's what it means to be a Christian. See, you just won't... God, see, a lot, to a lot of... See, God, a lot of Christian feminists... Treat God like they think men, like he's just a, a Santa Claus in heaven that's supposed to give you what you want. And then when I start talking about Blake Henry and Blue Henry, what it takes to be the kind of man that you women say you want, ask that woman, how much does a man need to make to be able to pay for you and three kids to be in a suburban household and da 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 da, da in a major metropolitan city? I don't know, $80,000? What? On the West Coast, 80000 for five people. For all the stuff I said, I don't know, I'm not good with man. See? When God, when when a man is just got a, a, a Christian Santa Claus like like you know, digital Jesus, it's just supposed to happen. I just pray on it and it, God makes it happen. Come on, man, and, be and men. as it should be. Is it if you're a Christian? And I think sometimes hold on, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. Okay. As it should be, if you're a Christian, you're a you don't have to be a Christian. We chose to be Christians and we don't get to select the parts of the doctrine in the Bible we choose to follow. That is a new thing with all this prosperity preaching. Everything I've asked you, ma'am, 65 years with your grandparents, 48 years with your parents, your father is your pastor. And every question that I've asked you to, to actually get you to define something, you've slid away because you didn't want to answer specifically what you and I both know to be the truth that you say you believe. Well, no, I answered to you what my dad has said as my pastor. And he did say that man should not live without a wife and the wife should submit to the husband. The husband so I'm should sure, submit. So I'm sure, I'm sure when you and your ex chose to divorce he probably also counseled you both mm -hmm. and he counseled you on divorce yes okay that's fine but we also but, had other other christian counselors outside the church but ultimately and ultimately I, I asked you earlier do you want to marry a long-term relationship and at the end of the day man what it really comes down to it is a dangerous thing to tell women that you don't need men because what it is is what you're saying. You don't need, you do need us. You need I don't us. think I would tell a woman that she doesn't need a man. What well, I would tell a woman is not to feel. Now, I want you to understand the mental gymnastics that Christian feminist mindsets have them to go through in order to take pressure off women so they don't feel bad about being unsuccessful Christians, unmarried women, living their life in contradiction to the belief system they say they hold why, why why are we as believers taking that pressure off i mean think about the nerve this is like you put yourself on top of god 
I don't want women to feel this way. So you know what? I'm a, forget what the what the what the Bible says and the pastor. Forget what God said. Let me tell you what it really is. Isn't this what happened in the Garden of Eden? And you wonder why patriarchy exists to control this kind of thinking. Don't come down on yourself if you're not yet married. I'd say the same thing to a man. Don't come down on yourself if you're not yet married. Okay, but but who okay, if you're not yet married, but but it, mm -hmm. but is there a clock on that? Is there a clock so on I this? think with a biological clock for men and women, it could be. Because if a woman doesn't have um, her baby by the age of 35, 36, she's considered high risk. If a man doesn't have his child um, by his mid-40s, he's considered high risk. Okay, let um, me ask you, let me ask you a very a defining with... question about marriage. Why? Do, sure. What is the purpose? Why do we marry? Well, you marry to, to reproduce, to to bring children into the world, to raise them in the admonition of the Lord. That's one reason. But what else? I, I would think to to raise productive citizens in society, okay. um, to keep your seed, to keep your legacy going. Right. So you can so you can do none of that as an individual. Certainly can't do anything as an individual Christian. Oh, it looks like people are saying, why am I up here if I'm talking about other people? I don't because care about, that's all could I... you please stop looking and see, I don't understand okay, sorry. why you are doing that. I mean, I'm trying to be, have a conversation with you and I'm not looking there and it's my show. Okay. Well, it sounds as though you're more concerned. I'll respect concerned. that. Let me hide the chat. How about <laughs> Let that? me just hide them. <laughs> how, about, okay. well, how about you just, because what you, see, I, 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 we're Christians. We chose to be that. So I cannot sit there and say I agree that you're saying that a woman should not feel bad that she's not married or whatever. At some point, you need to have a husband if you're a Christian. Your yeah, purpose, I mean the Bible your says that, your right? Purpose, the Bible yes, says you, a man should not live without a wife. Exactly. A woman should not so, live so, without we, a man. so what? What we what we say? So what we're saying? What? We, so what you ultimately said is you didn't want women to feel something wrong. There is something wrong if you're a Christian and don't have a husband. At some point. You don't, you, I, a woman. I just uh, don't want people. It doesn't matter, ma'am, ma'am, you're a Christian. Ma'am, ma'am, I'll just say this and I'll move on to the next call. Tiffany, your father's a pastor. You, yes. What you want is in direct. What, what women like this want, what Christian feminists want, is what's effectively happened to the black community and which is why we have such a problem. You want to remove shame. You don't want women to, you don't want, in this case, women to feel any shame. Everything a woman chooses to do in her natural will is blameless and shameless. She can do it all and you don't want her to feel shame. And I don't think anybody in their right mind can say the black community is a better off unit than it was 70 years ago when we had Nuclear families, churches, and shame. That's what this all is. I don't want these women to feel shame. I don't want you to feel like you're 40 years old and unmarried and you're still coming to church every Sunday but, and, and, you ain't, and you've had plenty of suitors and kept in suitable men, but you never decide to marry one. But you keep on waiting. And I'm waiting for God to send me one. And you get to heaven. God, what is this story about? A man's out in the middle of the, uh, the, uh, the ocean, drowning. A boat comes by. You need some help? No, God will save me. Another boat comes by. You need some help? No, God will save me. Another boat comes by. You need some help? God will save me. Eventually, gives up on exhaustion, drowning, goes to heaven. And he says, God, I thought you loved me. I thought you would save me. He said, I sent you three boats, you dummy. Uh, how many women have you seen on my show who have had none of the, the women who are the biggest Christians? They all had men. Several men. More men than the average woman that calls into my show. Christian, intelligent, college educated black women have had their opportunity because most of them are a lot of them are attractive. But you don't want any shame because you always look, mm, boy, howdy.
conflict with your belief system. That's for you to sort out. But I'm just knowing, just understanding, according to Christianity, you're a hundred percent incorrect. I can't, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong to have it, but you're wrong as a Christian and you know it. Yeah, I think maybe I'm being misunderstood because I'm no, not I saying that a man and a wife shouldn't be together. I, 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 understand, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. That, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. You rush that you might end up divorced. Like well, me. no, no. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I, it, I don't want you to rush it. See? You got to be specific on the boat you're waiting for. You got to wait. You got to wait. You got to wait because it got to be right. See, that means that's this whole get the bag, level up. Everybody got to be perfect. I got to wait till I'm perfect and open the floodgates. Cause if you rush it, you might get divorced. I challenge all of you Christian women, feminists who think that way, black women file eight out of 10 divorces. Black men are not leaving their black wives. Black wives are leaving their black husbands. Even if 50% of the divorces that are filed are for the worst parts of the Bible, abuse, uh, physical abuse, uh, emotional abuse, lying, cheating, adultery, all, I mean, this horrible stuff. You know, um, unrepentant addiction and da, 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 da. Just make it a dangerous person to be around. Even if half, that means four out of 10 are marriages that should still be working. But why are so many women walking away from their husbands? You ask them what happened. And it's irreconcilable differences, i.e., I wasn't happy, i.e., I was looking for something better. I deserve more. I need to level up. How many women have you heard who are Christians on my show sitting around talking about they're ready to lead their husbands to level up? And then I've, I've talked to three women on this show who they called in talking about leveling up. And they and basically talking like their husbands wasn't crap. And then turn out that their husbands were saints to be with them. And what did I do? Counsel them to stay with your husband. You better go be, thank God you got this man. But you women are worried about rushing into a marriage too soon because you're under divorcing. How about this? Stop filing divorce. I wish we would go back to uh, no fault divorce is one of the worst things we did. Because now you guys can just get a divorce because you ain't happy. You're not happy. Well, you're not happy. How can you be the least married group on the planet and, and, and file the most divorces? Ask a lot of these Christian feminists, especially the ones who were divorced, who filed. Guarantee you almost, uh, I would tell you almost 100% of the time, they are the ones leaving. That's, but Okay. No, Christian women filing for a divorce from their Christian husbands. Rush, you might have a divorce. No, no, I don't give you that. Because if you get married for not love, you get married for, for very practical reasons, spiritual reasons, Christian reasons. See, back in the day, we used to do this. A lot of this hallmark love stuff, your feelings and all this other stuff did not matter. You got married because of children legacy things and you eventually you fell in love with your spouse and the and the you church hold, hold on hold on hold on and the church did not move the way the world did today the church has become far too worldly and this is what's in the church this is why so many you you're a church going woman you see how many men are no longer in church mm-hmm why do you think so many men are not in church? Because they are tired of hearing Christian women talk like this. You have Christian women speaking in contravenance to Christianity. That is why men are leaving the church. That is why pastors are actually actually telling their female flock, do not speak this way. Do not say these things. But yet black women, black Christian women are some of the most stubborn, hard-headed people on the planet because at the end of the day it's your faith and it's god is the person you're going up to but at the end of the day nothing in god's word nothing in god's appointed men on earth nothing god has said is what you women are talking about yeah that's so why people in the I chat think, room will talk that's why people I in the think chat kevin room we i think you and i actually agree i think we're agreeing to be honest with you a man should not be alone, right? That's in God's word. 
a woman should... Watch the verbal judo. A man should not be alone. When God wrote man should not be alone. See, God would often write man when he was talking about mankind, meaning man and a woman. But see, feminist logic tries to make that specific to men when it fits them. That's what we're about to have here. Um, be the helpmate to the man, submit to the man. The man should honor and love the wife just as Christ loved the church. We agree on that. All I'm saying is don't come down on yourself if it hasn't happened for you yet. If you want. Why would a Christian woman be telling Christian women to not put pressure on yourself to find your, to be in a position to be found by your husband? How is this helping women? Don't feel bad if you're not married yet. Yes, we need, yes, you should. I mean, just go ahead. Yeah, you should. There's something wrong. 26% marital rate, there's something wrong. We need to bring shame back. How many people in the chat room, men or women, how many people in the chat room agree that we need to bring shame back, especially into the black church? That we need to start say, how many people in the church, how many people in the in the chat room, especially black Christians, can admit that we need to start bringing back and saying, uh, "Excuse me, ma'am, you got three, you got two kids by three different men. Uh, that, what's going on? We we need we need to start calling this stuff out. How many people would love to go to a mother's cere Mother's Day ceremony and you see an old school pastor uh, get channeled into one of these mega churches and and T D Jake start speaking out against baby mamas? on Mother's Day, speaking at it from a Christian standpoint. How many of you would love to hear that? You pay good money to, you would, you would donate a lot to hear T.D. Jakes on a Mother's Day say, I gotta be honest with you women, you run a foul of God. You got that boy and that girl and you ain't with the father and da 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 and lock the goddamn doors so they can't leave and let them get that holy work as he's supposed to be saying. Instead of just telling them, I've been in church where I've seen married men in, in the potter's house looking at their wives, hear a different message than the husbands. We're like, what? I sat there and watched my marriage fall apart in front of me because I was like, my wife is seeing something different because it's that prosperity shit. Your life is your life. You're supposed to be happy. You're, so, you're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be that. And when marriages are falling apart left and right, eventually Bishop Jakes have to say, excuse me, oh, let me backtrack. Didn't know many of you women were actually invoking my name in your marriage and arguments with your husband. That ain't exactly what I meant. I was trying to get them ties to come in. I wasn't trying to put you in opposition to your headship. Let me back up. Too late. We need to bring shame back to the church. And, and supposed Christians, we volunteer to be Christians. No one makes us this. We volunteer. So yes, this is why I told you, ma'am, you are wrong. You don't want to feel bad. I give a damn what you want to feel. That's feminist logic. They should feel bad. They should feel something. There should be pressure upon Christians to act like Christians. To find love, you can and will find love. Okay, but first off, ma'am, first off, let's, let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there. Mm -hmm. The last thing you just said had nothing to do with Christianity. And I repeat, don't come down on yourself if you haven't found love. You or will. Or should I find... say, if you haven't found your spouse? But let, but you, let me you change no, that. no, but you <laughs> but no, ma'am, you said you've said it three times, and that's the point. You still are conflating love and marriage. That's why I've asked you. Well, the you Bible what, says that. The Bible no, says the husband does should not. love the wife as Christ loved the church. But that is not That's the love. purpose of marriage. It is not romantic love. I'm not talking oh, hold on, about hold romantic on, love. Me, I'm, I'm talking Tiffany, about the God No, 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 no. Tiffany, love. Tiffany, the, the, man should love, love. the man should love his wife like God, like Jesus loved the church. That she said what she meant. Clean it up with agape at the end. No, no, you were talking about eros, romantic love, not agape. I know the words too. That's why I was like, well, let me clear it up. If you didn't mean love, let me say your spouse. No, you meant love. This is romantic love. See, romantic love and, it, and agape love have been completely screwed up in the church. The church was never about romantic love. It was always about agape. You didn't talk about love and arranged marriages. 
Love came later. Agape. Agape love. Let me say that again. You marry for duty. Duty. A wife marries for a duty to her man, her husband. And a, mar a man marries for duty to his wife. That's what the vows are for. Those aren't suggestions. How many of you Christian women have walked away from your functioning marriage because you weren't happy? You had a little hiccup or a bump in the road. Uh, for better, for worse, for sick or for poor and riches and health. Well, he lost his job last year and money ain't, I can do, I can get child support and get, mm, mm. duty, but you can't, can't talk about duty because that requires you to be selfless. It requires you to hold yourself to a higher standard than the rest of the world that's fallen. That's what we're supposed to be. The church is supposed to be the light. Yet the marital rate, the divorce rate in the church is higher than in the world. How the hell does that happen? Which is not that. romantic love. You're talking about eros. I didn't say, I didn't say anything about romance. But, I never said the word romance. But the love you're talking about is romantic love. Don't come down on yourself. You have not found love. Selfless love, agape, has no, nothing to do with... The, okay. the, the christ -like I am not love. new, Tiffany. I'm not new to I you. think we agree, Kevin. We, we're the, we, agree. We, do, we do agree except for one thing. A woman's purpose on the planet is a man. That is your sole purpose. Is a man's purpose a woman? Like that what is, would be oh, a man? The woman's purpose on this planet is a man. That is a statement of Christian fact. Now I want you to hear what is said. See, if you're trying to be in alignment with men, see, this is, let me let me let me segue. This is the problem a lot of black men have with black women. You want, you want global protection. You want protection from, you, you, when you talk about you're not protected or provided for, da, 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 but then you ask who you're submitting to. I'll submit to my man, this or that. So you only submit to one man, but all the other men are supposed to be able to stand in to defend you like a man, but you're not submitted to them. Does this conversation seem like she's trying to get on the same page with me or is she trying to come back with me? I'm asking Christian Christian stuff that's not debatable. And and this part right here was a, a big aha. A woman's purpose on this planet is a man. And she said, so a man's purpose on this planet is a woman? That's some playground. I know you are, but what am I? Okay. Uh, a man that is your per worry about your purpose. See, you want to win an elect intellectual battle. Your purpose is a man. That's it. And then this is that West. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. I deal with your purpose. See what you're doing right now has nothing to do with Christianity or anything else. Is it is an ego battle and Why? a man's purpose is to follow God. This sounds like a child. This child is hearted. It's like, it's like, why are you questioning what my purpose is? Do your job. Don't worry about my job. Do your job. But no, black female Christian feminists want to tell you how to do your job. Like Eve tried to tell Adam, if we ain't following people, I don't know. I mean, boy, anyway. You, hey, what, is a man, what is a man's purpose? What does it matter if you're a woman? What is your purpose? So that everyone. What is your? What is understand. a woman's per? What is a woman's purpose? See, too many Western women, especially our black women, you're out of position. I, the Bible says, "Follow me as I follow Christ." So, as the woman is, uh, the husband's leading the household. He's leading the woman and the children as he follows Christ. And that does not change what I said. That's what I'm saying. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> we're not arguing. we only we agree if she's married if you're unmarried you're uncovered you're not following anybody you're following yourself that's what i've been asking as a single woman who are you following 
as a single woman, you're I'm following God. To my pastors, and I, I'm following exactly. The Lord. You're following your pastor, who is your father, but your father already has a charge, ma'am. Single women, divorced women, we're not. Let's not play games. You're uncovered, and there's a provision. There's provision there, but that and there's a there's a there's time frame definitely on there. provision there. But you're not supposed to live life on there's provision there for when the husband dies. Not when you divorce and leave your husband. That's that's some of that new way Christian stuff. Yo, there's a provision there for single mother single women or, or, or women who whose husband have moved on, but not divorcees. You're living in sin. It's sin. As a Christian woman, I and agree. Men so, so, have there, wives, so, wives so, have so, so, if you're not but supposed to live, life, so, shout out to so, parents. so, no, no, and, and there's a, a woman, I agree, men should have wives and wives should have, I agree, but then she said, shout out to the single parents. This is a Christian woman, this is, that's feminism right there. Again, I don't want women to feel bad. So if you're a single woman out here, which is, which is really a divorcee. And this what we're talking about. I don't want you to feel bad that you walked away from your marriage. You broke your covenant with God. I'm sorry. I want you to feel bad. I want you to know that you broke your covenant. I wish you had to walk around with a big red Christian D on you. And they sat you up, up with other divorcees. You should not be able to come in here like nothing's wrong. Y'all got married on January and you divorced in December and you back up in the church. He over there, you over there, like ain't nothing wrong. What are we doing here? This is why men have left the church. They're tired of seeing women with no consequences, playing with the gospel, playing with the rules, playing with everything else. And pastors and the church not holding women accountable to the gospel. Tired of it. Men are tired of hearing it. So so many men have a relate, are holding church or going in their own closet, having a one-on-one relationship with God. So many, I hate that I, I, it bothers me that I cannot go to church like I want to go to church. I used to go to church, but I do not like what I see in modern Christian churches today. Facts. I take my grandmother's Bible that she marked up from here to there and the Bible I have over there since I was five years old is falling apart and my Bible that my grandfather gave me and I go to work here because I know when I walk over there, I'm going to see a bunch of bull. I'll shout out single parents. I don't shout out single parents. No, especially Christian ones. It's not about, yeah. it's well, not about love. Know, it, it, it's, it's not sad a, it's, when you become a single parent, but you no, do what you it's gotta... not sad when you become a single. It's sad when you become a single parent. What do you mean when you become a single parent? You don't become a single parent. You choose to be a single parent. Become a single parent. You hear these words? This is why black Christian feminists. This is feminist doctrine. Shout out to the single mothers. Fuck you mean? It's sad when you become a single parent. What do you mean you become? You become. You become. A caterpillar becomes a butterfly. What are you metamorphed into a single mother? You see all these softening words? Oh my God, we need old school shame back. You don't need the red pill if you're in church. The Bible is the biggest red pill you ever need. You don't need no red pill if you're a Christian. The red pill is the Holy Bible. It's it ain't changed. It's the pill of pills. It's sad when you choose to be a single Christian parent and live in contravenance to the thing you say you believe. That's when it's sad because how did that happen? See, you're. Here's what I find troubling about this conversation. I don't know how that means. You're a woman who was raised with a 60, almost 70 year marriage and an almost 50 year marriage and a father who's a pastor. And I'm getting this level of pushback. And you're supposed to be one of the good ones. 
What about the women who were raised? I hope raised I'm a good one. Well, well, I got to be honest. I'm going to move you to the side because I don't want this to be about you, Tiffany. I don't want you guys to make this about her, but I use these ladies as avatars because I will, I believe that when I open the call lines, I can hear black men, black Christian men tell me story after story after story after story about similar encounters they've had with black femi black Christian feminists. I don't know any upstanding Christian black brother that believes black Christian feminists are the good ones. I don't care how good you look in that dress on Sunday. I don't care how that dress nips at your waist and them hips do this and you looking there, you looking good and smelling good and the I don't it is it is my it is mind boggling and it's so it is so tearing for men to look at women in church and know that satanic demonic feminist thoughts are running through your head in this sacred place that you can look at that very same Bible and hear the very same message and twist it in such a way that ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with God. That's got everything to do with the world and feminism. And that feminism has crept its way into the church where you're supposed to be on guard for that kind of stuff. It's to the point to where you're actually preaching it to the men. What you telling your sons? I'm going to be honest, ma'am. Um, there are some things that are extremely troubling about what it is you say you believe. And that's the, and that's the problem. A lot of black men have, this is a woman who says her grandparents were married for 65 years. Her parents are married for 48 years. Her father is her pastor, yet she's divorced and telling women don't feel bad if you don't fall in love or have a man or whatever you want to come out. And all the stuff you're talking about does not line up with what it is you say you believe yet. That's what you say you're putting in head ahead of you trying to help you find a, a, a husband it's going to be on God. And everything I've done is used exactly what you said to show you that you're in contradiction, but you're still going to hold on to it. Because here's the real problem, Tiffany. Too many black women like yourself are just hard headed and can't nobody tell you nothing. Oh, goodness. I'm pretty. Okay. <laughs> you said your dad. No, she actually thought that was funny, but I was serious. I honestly, they don't believe that. I'll be honest, a lot of women who move like this, black Christian feminists, they don't believe they're being hard-headed. They honestly think we got a problem. They really think, why? what's the big deal? I mean, really, they do. It's like, <laughs> the issue ain't them, it's us. How do I know this? I've done this a long time. And again, if you got a, if you're, this is a discussion about Christian marriage, so if I don't want to hear, I'll, I've said at the beginning, you're in there talking crazy about marriages, and I'm just timing you out. Let's talk about the show. Okay. You and I are probably the same age. <laughs> I don't, and what does that have to do with anything? You don't hear those words hard-headed unless it's like a parent talking How to old a are you? child. I'm 37. I'm 51. You look good. And even if I was 36, I'm still a man. Yep. And if you're a Christian, you know what that means. So I don't understand what me saying something you need to be... That's why I wanted to have this conversation. Yeah. I mean, I think we I, are. I, I, I it was a, it was a good conversation because disagree. what I think what you're going to see is they're going to be, I'm a, I'm a patient person. I'm a learned person, but I know what I believe and why I believe it. And here's the thing. If it is this difficult for a well-intended black man to even get a woman who says she's well-intended to just agree with me on what it is you say you believe, 
how the hell are black men and women supposed to figure it out and stay together 48 and 65 years? It ain't. I do happen. agree with you. I keep telling you. No, ma'am, you here. don't. We no, we no, ma'am. If you if this I keep is telling you we're on the I same page. The voodoo. If you, if you think this is on a one accord, I hate to see discord. Just because you're not cursing and calling me out of my names, you're not in agreement. I wouldn't do that. Exactly, but it does not change the fact that you're still in opposition to what it is you say you believe. And I don't even have to get per. I, that's why I didn't get into your personal life and why you're not this. I don't want it. It does not matter. This is a yeah. global issue with black men and black women. There should not be this amount of acrimony, especially with people who raise their hand and volunteer to be Christians. No one forced us to be Christians. No one forced us to live our lives in accordance. That's why I asked you very specific questions. You say your father is your pastor. You are supposed to be agreeing with me. That's not supposed, when I ask you what a woman's purpose is, it shouldn't be all this, it's a man to be a help me. I mean, this is, this is supposed yeah. to be really easy for Christian women. To be a help me, to cover him, to, you know, I agree. All right. I do agree with that. Well, uh, okay. Well, it's good to say with our mouths, but when we live it with our lives, there's not this amount of acrimony. But I thank you for calling in. Yeah, I do. I, I think this you. is a good call. Thank you. You Thank have you a very much. And, and y'all stop looking at the chat room. They ain't on nobody. You don't know these folks. They, they ain't think, a culture. I think you got some good people in the chat. They, yeah, but they, you, they but you straight but, shooters. Okay, but if they got some good ones, then, I mean, I, I don't allow guys to come over and troll women and stuff. But we're going to have, I think this is a good conversation because if black men and women don't have these, we ain't, I mean, our marital rates are going to continue to do what they do and our families are going to continue to do what they do. All right. Well, that was it. So let me let me say this. People are lining up in the uh, Zoom room. And Tiffany was a good sport. You know, and I honestly, look, man. Who was I talking to earlier? It dawned on me earlier today. I just started running back through my mind how many beautiful attractive single Christian black women are running around these churches who in another generation would have been your wife, my wife, his wife, their wife. But then you go to another church and everybody coupled up. But in a black church, it's all women because the men then left. The men are at home on Saturdays, on Sundays. So for the guys who want to get married, your wives are at church. They just don't know who, they, they how to get the feminism up out of them. Leave the Christianity, take the feminism. So like, that's why I was laughing at Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany's an attractive woman. And I was sitting back, I was like, and it's really about women in the South too. It's like, and it, and it bothers you more. It bothers a lot of these guys more because you look at the women like, man, She's pretty. She's attractive. Man, if it just wasn't a feminist, but you can't say if she just wasn't a feminist. I mean, that's a big piece. It, it ain't like you just get rid of that. It's like, you know, man, if blowfish just wasn't poisonous, yeah, it is. I mean, I know you can eat that little piece right there, but it's it's the rest of that shit that'll kill you. <laughs> All right, let's get him on. Be respectful. Be respectful. Miyaka. I'm Makaya. Makaya, what's going on? So, like, dang, man, where my wife at, man? She in church. Oh, man, dang. Dang. Because you know, man, you know, hot lips. You take hot lips to church on Sunday, and you should be in that little pencil skirt. Be like that. Be like, dang, man, I wish she, oh, I wish she would just get, oh, hold on. Uh, wait for the phone to connect. There it is. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm back again. You're back again. Let me make sure it's connected. What you got for me? Hold on, it's not the sound's not coming through yet. I'm gonna have to give me a better phone connection. 
even I want everybody to hear. So give me a second. Call me. I'll just launch it over here. Just a second, Makaya. Because I want people to be able to hear you. I'll just launch it on my computer. Join meeting. Uh, guys, be nice and be nice to everybody. Don't don't get ugly. Don't be mean to people. You know. Yeah. Ain't no, yeah. none of us perfect. All right. Uh, Makaya, go ahead. So, I guess I'm listening to what you're saying, and uh -huh. I'm a little bit confused by the term Christian feminist because uh -huh. I'm thinking that it's just a misinterpretation of clear language of the Bible. I don't necessarily think it's feminism because even if you look at the most common story that you hear people talk about with regard to mating and finding partnership, the story of Ruth and Boaz, if you read the story, the book of Ruth is only four chapters. If you read the story, Ruth presented herself to Boaz. Mm -hmm. and the presentation of Ruth was appealing to Boaz and therefore both people were in a position to become one. I don't necessarily understand how that's a, a can be confused. So All right. let me let me say this. Do you know what feminism is defined as? Yes, I do, and I'm not a feminist. Okay, so to be clear, so, I agree with what you're saying. Okay, yeah. So that's and that's what I was. If you noticed in the women I kind of showcase. There was always this advocacy for women's rights and equality. Yes. And that the Christianity does not make us, we are definitely not equals in Christianity. Exactly. Right. That's why the term Christian feminist is like an oxymoron. Right. And so I guess what I'm saying is it just seems to me that these women may be feminists, which I think is an affirmation that you have to affirm feminism. Mm -hmm. But I guess the bigger thing is they, they're just misinterpreting clear language. And mm -hmm. so if, it's interesting to me that the word Christian and Christianity is being thrown around and these individuals aren't very clear about the book, if you believe it from cover to cover. Well, let me tell you what I think one of the big clear. problems is, and Tiffany's in here. Here's one of the big problems I've noticed in the church. I grew up Baptist. I was baptized Baptist. So if anybody knows anything about different parts of Christianity, Baptist is, you know, uh, a pretty old school. Then I went Church of God in Christ. That means a lot of stuff came out of the Old Testament. So we got sin. You know, you heard you was going to hell quite often. All right. But long about the mid 80s, early 90s, something happened in the church. It was almost a reformation. Prosperity preaching. Prosperity gospel. Are you familiar with the term? Yes. Prosperity gospel became the new thing. And what pastors across the churches recognize is church membership don't tithes and uh, uh, offerings were up when you're preaching redemption. Everybody can live. It's your life. When when people are hearing that, people are more apt to give. Because one of the biggest because church has a business component. Because remember back, I mean, I don't know how old are you? Thirty what? Thirty two. Thirty two. Thirty two. Okay. Uh, in the seventies, you had five or six offerings. You had this offer and that offer in the building fund. Da, da, da. They put your name on the back of the bulletin. They got a little thing up on the on the wall, daily tithes. Collecting tithes was a, was a chore for churches. They used to, churches would shame their members into it. But when Prosperity Gospel came along, 
There were no mega church. There weren't. There were not as many mega churches in the '60s and '70s. But now you got mega churches everywhere, right? I agree. And I guarantee you, they're preaching what's called Christianity light. My mother was a single mother in 1969. She could not go to church pregnant. That's that's facts. <laughs> okay. Church of God in Christ, your skirt, you know, unless they went to church together and I put you in a little skirt, they come they come across and put a towel around on front of on front of your legs, cover your legs. So that nobody can see up your skirt. You pants, good luck with that. They will put you out. You can't come into church with pants. If you're a church mother, you're wearing all white. And them gloves. So but what you notice in these churches is there's a high marital rate. And see, what I used to hear, this is what I used to bother me. You hear black women, when that color purple did more to fuck up the black community than anything else. Because the story goes around that in marriages like that, there was all this abuse going on. I'm sorry. That's just not the truth. Black men have never been Mr. Alice Walker. Ugh, that woman. That story has done more to damage black male female relationships because we associate marrying young or marrying for a long time as bondage. So they tell a woman like you, Girl, go out and get your job, get your career, whatever. You don't need no man because if you do, he going to keep you barefoot and pregnant. And when you ain't got no money and no job, next comes the beatings. Tell me I'm lying. I, I agree with you. So. <laughs> so I understand. I, I get exactly what you're saying. I think the message that, I mean, I guess, I have is that I think the interesting part to me is something that I find to be common with black women is it's always I achieved this goal. I went to school. I got this degree. I achieved this success. Mm -hmm. It's never attributed to God, right? Right. But when it comes time for relationship advice, God will send me. Get out of there, Micaiah. Get out of there. Get out of there. They're going to hate you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's real. It's interesting. I know. How God is supposed to slap a person in your. Mm -hmm. Who's supposed to be what you want them to be. And like I said yesterday, you do have to do some level of work to prepare yourself for the right situation. And if you do take time away from dating and relationships and you should be working on preparing yourself for your next relationship. Mm -hmm. But in my personal opinion, I think the need to not need a man or to say you don't need a man is more because it's easier to say you don't need what you don't have. Mm -hmm. my, my mother was the most diehard, big Afro, black power feminist in the world. My mother was the word for that woman. Woo! She's a red pill horror story. And it, but she was raised by my the people who raised me. She was raised right. And one thing happened when my mom turned fifty one. She went through this tra transfer that I didn't notice. She called me. My mom put all that bullshit down. And in under three years, she found a husband, the most unlikely man I've ever met in my life. Called me up and said, hey, son, what you doing? Coming down to Dallas. I was like, what? Huh? My mom don't just do that. I was like, she got, she, but I know my mom. I'm like, she about to bring somebody down here for me to meet. I'm like, what? I was like, I don't like your boyfriends. They're assholes. And you, you don't date the right kind of dudes. And you don't. I met this dude, this dude from backwater Oklahoma country as hell. But I just watched him. Good man, they've been married for going on 25 years. If I can see my mother, 
who would be the poster child for feminism and all this other kind of stuff decide to put that shit down and what it did for her late in life anybody can do it but she would tell you i'm not going to have my family on here but she would tell you i stopped fighting what i knew was right now we moved house to house to house to i mean apartment rent and all this other kind of stuff the typical black life they got a big old home she done done more travel she's done more living better living in the last 25 years than she did in the first 50 and that woman was happier than i ever seen in my life and and they and they argue like any old married couple and i'm like but i don't worry about my mama because i know she got a husband and a man up there to love her and take care of her and they are just a diametrically opposed opposite and i was like i wish more black women could do what my mother did and stop and put the bullshit down because we all know it's bullshit there are more black women than black men. Black men want to. I have over the last several years of turn. I'm a I'm an image guy and a and a fragrance guy, but I've made this tack on YouTube because I because I can. But I've heard more men say, "I want to be with a woman. I want this. I want that." I hear more men say they want to be with with women, and I hear women say they want to be a man. It's almost like if a woman admits she wants a marriage or a man you breaking code nah so good good to hear that from you though I let me, let me you. okay well thank you for coming in let me let me see uh if i'm about to get cut, cussed out i'm put you back e evelyn what did i get wrong hello you need, to, you need to start your audio, Evelyn. Who's harassing you? Rael. Don't harass Tiffany. I leave Tiffany alone. Tiffany was a good sport. I let Tiffany know I was going to talk about her. Speak about her, but I didn't talk about her. Who's there are some things I did not like, but... Don't Tiffany. Tiffany. You need to mute, just, need to mute, uh, just... mute that stuff in the background. Tiffany... It's a pretty woman, man. Yeah, I better. If we can get that feminism up out of her, boy, she gonna get that third. Tell you, I, I, I tell you, Tiffany gonna be married by the end of next year. Third and final marriage. Trust me. Invite me to the wedding, Tiff. Y'all to check out her channel. She can walk down the channel. Hi, Tiff. Put your channel in, in the chat room, Tiff. Tell you, man, she she looks like a Houston chick too, man. I, I love your lips. If you wasn't crazy, girl, you might be all right. But you crazy as hell. We kill each other. Hi. Hey now. How's it going? I, I I'm good. How'd I mess up? What I do wrong? I don't know how you messed up. I uh, <laughs> I joined Zoom a while ago, and then I I just found your channel due to your fragrance stuff, and I didn't know you did these type of videos. So I, I was just I, in the chat. I know it's crazy, right? Who who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was only talking about um, just uh, I think you said something about like prosperity preaching or whatever, and I was mm -hmm. just like, yeah, a lot of uh, the church nowadays is very you know, just trying to pacify people. So it's pretty sad. Right. Are you in, are you, go, do you go to church? I do. Um, and you found me through fragrance videos? Yeah, I was looking for a oud fragrance. Mm -hmm. And I think you had a video about Gucci and Tense oud, but mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. So I went with Aqua de Parma oud. Okay. So on your channel, there was just like other stuff and, the and Gucci Intensu is great. It's back now. The problem was pretty rich. Oh, I didn't know. I mm. I'm like done buying fragrance for a while. Right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep it cute. Are you trying now? Are you trying to get okay? Are you trying to get married one of these days, Evelyn? Sure. Yeah. Is it is it Evelyn? Evelyn. Yeah. My okay. name on here is Evie. That's okay. You don't I'm have to tell him, but I'll just make sure I can call you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so you trying? Uh, are you in the states? I am. Cool. How old are you? I'm 27. Uh oh, 27 to 35. That means marrying age. So let <laughs> yeah. me let me see if I can help you get. Let me see if I can help you find you uh, a oh, Blake Henry. <laughs> let me see what I can do. I mean, I mean, 
my channel, guys freak up my channel uh, are not the same guys. A lot of these guys want to be out of a relationship. Uh, they want to admit marriage in public, but they really do. So, a lot of, most of them anyway. So, all right. So, uh, do you have any kids? No. Yay. Keep it that way. Uh, yeah, no. I, <laughs> marry before I carry. There you go. No no babies gives you opportunity. Uh, did you go? Did you go to college? I have, yes. Did you graduate? Yes. Don't be nervous. Don't, and don't look at the chat room. Please don't look at the chat room. They're crazy. No, I'm not. <laughs> They're crazy in there. All right. I asked this question to everybody. Height, weight, and dress size. But you can tell me your height and dress size if that's better. Um, I'm 5'8". Okay. And I am a 6. Uh-oh. How often do you wear heels? Um, I wear heels pretty often. I mean, not during quarantine, because you know. We're not doing the... quarantine, girl. I want you to get. I want you to wear heels going I'm to not, the store. I'm, I'm not going to the grocery store and high. Oh yes, like you are. Mid, oh, like mid, like oh heel. no, no, like no. Like a mid heel, not like a four inch heel, like a three and a half, three. Tiffany, will you come tell her to put on some heels going to the Whole Foods? Try, let, let me okay, see. Whole Foods is different. Whole but see, that's but see, this is what I did. I did a show. Uh, talking about black uh, style, where I actually I did a go check out the show I styled uh, black women. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, and there were several women in there were like five, eight, and higher. And I, and one of the things I told all of them, I need you to take off the pants, put on the dress, skirts, and heels. Yeah, yes. this makes a difference. I wear heels pretty often. It's just, I mean. Working from home now is a bit different. So it, Girl, when I, I was it, working in before the Rona came, I would right. always wear like a dress or a right. skirt to work with like work heels, but not like high high heels because the work is not it's not okay. it for all that. What city so, are you in? Um, I'm in Washington, so Seattle. Seattle, see, and Seattle has some. Seattle loves my show. Seattle has some of the most uh, successful brothers on the planet. So, uh, right. if you're, so if you're looking to get married, you're in a place where more Keith Henrys are. Uh, you're 27. What is, are you actively dating anyone? Are you on dating apps? What's going on? Um, I'm not actively dating anyone. I'm not a fan of dating apps. Okay, but, but t talk to me before c Corona happened. Before Corona happened? Um, mm -hmm. Before Corona happened, I wasn't actively dating um before before the rona was march yeah i wasn't actively dating i was more so just focused on myself really i really mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that i was like you know doing a lot of self development before i put myself out there more i mean it was i i would say like me dating was more like i would get asked out go on a date you know see what's going on vet a little bit but then if there was some red flags like mm -hmm. if the person wasn't competent or not that i would just kind of you know let it let it just fade off respectively and just mm -hmm. you know keep it pushing yeah well so i guess so i guess i was more in intermediates i wasn't like an active like super dater like who's over here who's over there like it's not mm -hmm. really my well style. if you if women who if you like if you're serious about finding a, a husband, you got to get seriously active about dating. But that's the thing. It's like, I'm, I feel like I'm at, I'm at that age where I'm not into the club anymore, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, especially in a place like Seattle or, you know, non, it's, I mean, Seattle's a big city, but it's not like a New York or LA, but right. I feel like I'm just trying to find new hobbies that are more um, for meeting new people, but also enjoying new activities. That's outside of, oh, it's a birthday and come out with us, or we're having this dinner at this cute little swanky Do you lab. want to work for a living? When you when you get married, do you want to work? No. Okay. I'm pretty So sure. let's let's so if you watch my channel, uh I'm a newbie to your channel. Okay, so okay, so, so <laughs> I talk about I talk about the Henry's high earners not rich yet. Brad Lee, Keith, Enrique, Ahmed, Brad Brad Lee, Ahmed, Keith, and Enrique. Keith is the black brother. So the Keith Henry, let's be honest, to not have to work in on the West Coast 
and to live the kind of life most black women want to live. They talk about a man making about $325,000, $350,000 a year. That's with you, him, three kids. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So those kind of men aren't going to clubs or anything else. Those guys, when they're looking for a wife, they do, they do some very specific things. One, a lot of these guys use matchmakers. Okay. They're not on dating apps. They're not, and that's why I say, but they are in Whole Foods. The, the chances of running across one of these guys is slim to none because they're working 12, 10, 12, 16 hour days. You're going to find, if you were to find one of them organically, it would be at the local high end bar at Ruth Chris or at a high end steakhouse. How often do you frequent these places alone and go sit at the bar and have dinner? Um, I would say before the Rona, pretty. Pretty frequently, not so frequent, like once a week or whatever, but uh, I wouldn't, well, I'm not really a Ruth Chris person up here, but, but, but you know other, what I mean, that, like that kind of stuff here that I would go to for well, like, that kind of, that kind of stuff, is, that kind of stuff, but that's the easy stuff. That's the, yeah. that's the common stuff. I mean, are you a member or do you, or do you do any charity work? Habitat for Humanity, American Heart Association, oh, the Heart Walk, that kind of stuff. No. So that's really at the stage I'm at now, like I'm trying to find more extracurricular stuff so I don't get caught in the rut of like work home, work home. Well, you know? let me go ahead and put, uh, you need to join my uh, Facebook group. It's called The Mix. Um, uh, I'll okay. put a link down in the description. But there's okay. some things when I when I talk to women, I will always say this, high value men, um, when they're ready, it is six months or less. From the day he meets you to the day you're down the aisle. It don't take forever. I also agree with so, that. <laughs> and, so, and, and being in Seattle, where there were so many, Seattle's one of the top 10 cities for high value black men. So they're there and it's happening. You just have to end up being in a position to be able to find one of these guys or have them find you. Matchmakers, image consultants, personal trainers are your friends. That's how I kind of got into this because I work with with matchmakers and uh, well, now I do uh, and uh, personal trainers because it you gotta ask yourself if you got a high value man he's out there looking for a wife he's gonna pick the he has a lot of options why is he gonna pick you and if you are part of you know the American Heart Association the Circle of Red you know the, the Junior League you're involved civically. It says a hell of a lot more than just being hot sitting at the bar. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. The whole sitting at the bar thing, it's a fine dance because I don't mm. like, I, I don't mind going to the steakhouses. I mean, I don't, it's, it's a fun thing to do if I'm just hungry. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I personally would rather go like during the day or like times yep. where it doesn't seem like, I'm paid by the hour. Right. I just don't. Right. I just feel now, like. What do you go? Do you like, go to a? Do you go to a, a mixed church, a non-denominational church, black church? What? Uh, my church is black. Go to. Uh, this is something that's gonna happen. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I'll switch it's up a churches. Small church, though. It's not. Like, switch up church. Uh, I, no, you need to go. Where's the big? Where's the Joel Osteen kind of church in Seattle? Seattle's very like not. I, know. I mean, it's, Washington it's, in general is very secular. Like, it's not that religious. Yeah. So well, not, well, my ultimate... Okay, my point is everything at that level is about finding a man at that level. You're not going to... Finding a, a high-value black man at a small black church is very unlikely. Finding him at a mega church in Seattle, he's there for business and God. A lot of business gets done at mega church. You got to think yeah. about who your man is and where he's moving. Mm -hmm. That's what I need a lot of you ladies to understand. It's okay to want what you want, but you need to understand how my guys and guys like we're talking that you're talking about how they move. When they go to church, they're going to church to also to be able to say, Hey, there's Bob and Bob is over there. He's on the board of so-and-so and he, and, and I met him at church versus I'm trying to get an appointment with him. So yeah, right. join uh join my Facebook group and uh, and when you uh apply uh turn in your application, all you need is your age. And you have to have a profile picture, and then uh I'll let you in. But yeah, okay. keep keep watching. It's interesting okay. over here. 
All right. It is. It's funny. All right, <laughs> then. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, y'all leave uh, Tiffany alone. She she a good sport. Tiffany, you gonna get on? Tiffany, like I don't want to get on. See, I knew Tiffany would be a good sport. I didn't know about the the woman in the middle. I figured she'd probably be a little hostile. That was, but you know, I don't know that woman. But I, I just there was something right, wasn't right about some of the stuff that we were going back and forth with. But at the end of the day, black Christian feminist feminism this equal. Ladies, if you're a Christian woman, the notion of equality and women's rights is is at odds with what you say you believe. Yeah, Tiffany looks nice. Yeah, keep it respectful, guys. That's somebody's, uh, that's the pastor's uh, daughter and somebody's uh, ex-wife and somebody's mother. Yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, I had to say, yeah, mm-hmm. no simping and the pimping, but I was like, yeah, she, uh-huh. And even the even the woman in the middle, the second woman, Danny, she's not a bad looking woman. Nope. I mean, I have my type. I I like fine. So, at the end of the day, I can't believe churches are like that. Man, they are. I swear to God. I swear, if we could just like exercise the word, take prosperity out. And started preaching some more of old school gospel. You know, you, you know, the pastor with the toupee and the sweating. You need to hear you're going to hell every now and then. You need to hear something's wrong. Everything ain't right. It, it can't be sunshine. Christianity light is there to get you to give more money. And they're only preaching from certain parts. When you don't get to the Old Testament, when all they preach from is the New Testament. I mean, I understand we're under the new covenant, but if you never get to like the revelations, and if you ever gone to a church where they preach out of the Old Testament of revelations, you walk out of church shaking and shit like, oh Lord, oh, I'm going to hell. You're doing some work. <laughs> oh, Cause you know how you went to a prosperity church? Let me tell you how you know you went to a prosperity church. Oh, I'm just going to be so bad. Oh, sweet Jesus. I've seen people getting down in the parking lot after service. Because the Prosperity Church has got big parking lots. Uh, when you see a car way over there moving, I'm like, how in the heck you leave church? What it is? Oh, oh, what's up? What's up? Can I? Uh, 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 young girl, girl. Oh yeah, yeah. Give me your number and I'll call and I'll follow that in the mall, in the mall. Because, but, but see, I ain't gonna lie, man. If you've never been a church going guy, women dressed up on their Sunday best. There's, you know there's a God when you walking behind a woman and she's in that skirt and is doing this and you're like oh boy and, and, and you know you're a Christian when you're like oh I'm having some worldly thoughts right now cause girl oh I would just oh sweet Jesus the things I would do to you thank you Jesus especially like on the July and it's hot <laughs> oh, you go on the morning service. You get to get get something to eat afterwards, and you gotta put you got the newborn, so you got to wait for the baby to take that nap. And she didn't have boy y'all in there getting hoo hoo afternoon delight on the Sunday, boy. Holy Jesus, you hitting them high notes. Mm. Yes, yes. Maybe black folks should switch to Catholicism. It start on time. You get out on time. They burn incense. It's kind of like being at a club. But yeah, man, you know, I, I often tell guys there are a lot of beautiful women at church, but the problem is here's the what here's how a lot of this has happened. College is a carrier virus for a lot of this this equality talk, and it's not as though there's not some arguments to be made to 
right injustices. But if men are leaving churches and colleges and universities, what are the, what's happening as to why men are leaving? You ask men why they're leaving because it's anti-male. Guys are tired of hearing they're toxic and masculine and aggressive and bashing and this and that. They're tired of hearing all that. And the women who talk about all this and keep it going on in the mainstream, they don't look like you. They're going home. They, they're going to get their bread. They're going to flip it up and be like Cassie Jane, be like, oh, uh, yeah, I was a feminist and I decided no, I'm not going to do that. I need a husband. Yeah. Mm hmm. So let's see what's going on in the chat room. Uh, men are separating this unbalanced environment. Yeah. So. All right, guys, I'm going to get up off of here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to the first woman who's been a good sport about a lot of this. You know, I'm quite sure she does not like me, but eh, it's okay. I still try to be respectful. Thank you, thank you to Danny for being a good sport too. You know, um, there was definitely some things that I found troubling about some of the things you said, but you know, I wouldn't. She wouldn't date me. I wouldn't date her. Um, um, what do I want to say? High value men, ladies, Danny, they're not fools. So anybody who is making that kind of income, who is not producing who's not talking about serious unions he's just trying to play y'all are playing each other because there's somebody's playing and anytime games are played there's a winner and loser uh i was laughing i was saying to tiffany I was, and tiffany i was like yeah she, tiffany could if she's like daddy okay i'm gonna do it what i'm supposed to do okay i'm i quit okay i'm gonna give back my feminist starter kit show Okay. All right. I'll be good. Okay. I'm going to stop over talking. I'm going to do what I know. I'm going to do it. Yep. Yeah, mama. I'm going to do what you so, what you told me. Yeah, grandma. I'm going to do. Yeah, I hear you from heaven. I, I'm going to do it. Okay. See, when those kind of women, all it takes is the right man to be like, sit your ass down somewhere. Ooh, I like the way he put me in check. Mm, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. See, a woman like her, I'd be like, <laughs> what happened to Tiffany? She's a whole new woman. Mm -hmm. What happened, girl? He got that curve. Really? Uh, I don't know what it is you do with her, but y'all, you got, yeah. Mm -hmm. She threw away all her hell and ready CDs and shit. Gloria Gaynor, she didn't made a garage sale, sold all that. I will survive and... You know, I ain't woman hear me roar. She didn't got rid of all that. She's baking cookies and shit now. And, you know, lemonade stands and Girl Scout cookies and talking about having some old babies and just hosting dinner parties and Tupperware and shit. She, just all that. Her sorority sister be like, yeah, she's all pink and greened out and she's just walking around here a little sassy. Can't tell her nothing when she on her way to regions of Boulay. She just on cloud nine. What happened to her? Mm-hmm. She getting that good good from that man who told He didn't, uh, he didn't, mm. Yeah. You can't be a weak guy like that. And see, my problem, I'll be honest. Where I failed in my relationships is I like pretty women and I was not the man I needed to be to maintain frame. And that was a mistake on my part. Forget her. It was a mistake on my part. Um, that is why I am so against getting comfortable, getting content because that's not what we should be doing as men. But again, as a guy who was not raised by a father, I made more mistakes than I feel like I would have had to make had I had the father that I wanted. So 
it's for me to tell other guys, look, you can still become the man you need to be and then pass the baton on to the next one. And that's all I'm asking you ladies to do is if you know what's not working, tell the ladies what does work and don't sugarcoat it. Let them decide. But I believe that anybody who's willing to do the work in life can win. But it has to be the work first. See, black folks, we we, we prize youth. And a lot of uh, our, our, our uh, successful people are in entertainment and athletics. So we think life is over after 30. Oh, no. Life is just starting for a man at 40. And yes, I've been, uh, you guys have heard me talk about I date women. I prefer to date younger women, but that's not, that's not a hard and fast rule. There always have to be <clears throat> the right people will make you negotiate what not, I won't say make you change the rules, change your absolutes. Nothing is absolute in human beings. Except your principles and your standards as a man. Those are absolutes. Then enough fine to get me to change what I think. I'll pass up fine. And that's something a lot of guys, when you get to that point where you can pass over fine, no matter how fine she is, whatever, you know, I'd rather go down in looks to go up in cooperation. Once you get there, then you can actually go back up in looks. Because they realize they can't use that pretty privilege on you anymore. Pretty rich. We're going to do two more shows. There's a submission losing and the problems, the problems are being, the problems are being pretty, pretty problems. Pretty has some problems. Pretty women have problems. Believe it or not. Pretty women have problems. They, they just slip your, they, most guys don't see the problems of pretty women. Yep. If you missed today's live stream on a, uh, Patreon. Uh, I'm going to, I only did a short portion of it. I'm going to do a, 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 an elongated portion to complete this one. But today was a good stream. Shout out Andre Hatchet. Your yeah, fine is cool, but the other stuff is much. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, at the end of the day, man, I just want you to be, uh, I don't want to see, I'll put it this way. I'll be damned. None of you guys want to die alone. You don't want to die alone. It, it, this this it, the lady CV taught everybody else. It got you to realize, you know what? All this stuff was cool, but you know, maybe I do need to go ahead and live that, live that, live that, live that, live that. Nakia, what's going on? Peter's sister, what's up? We all die alone. Yeah, well, Robert, Albert, why, why, let me, dude? Let me go ahead and see what you're talking about. I, I, some of y'all guys just come through here just to just God damn what are the colors in your sky Jesus Christ I really wonder man it's like are any are some of you guys ever happy I mean seriously God are, what are y'all it's like are you only happy when you're being sarcastic or downer or whatever how often do you guys smile when was the last time you actually had a good time around people? When was the last time you sat down at a meal with a group of men and women and actually ate good, had a belly laugh? We going to do it Friday. Because we going to watch Love Jones and The Mix. Oh, yeah, by the way, The Mix, my, my uh, Facebook group, The Mix. It is not for everybody. Only if you are can be cool around uh, a group of like-minded men and women. So here it is. You will need a profile picture, your age, current marital status, which you're looking for, and your YouTube alias. There you go. Think about face, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn level kind of stuff. And here's the fan page. I have to get out of here. So... What was that one chick that came through here? If it, at the end it says you will become one flesh. So that go, yeah, go ahead and believe that if you want to. Go ahead. Keep trying to be literal about it. How that work out for you? I'm not debating it with you anymore. Believe what you want. Die alone. Enjoy it. Enjoy. What was that one chick that came through here? Uh, Napa Auto Parts. Is Napa Auto Parts in here? Let me see. Napa Auto Parts. Are you here? Napa. 
Napa Auto Parts. She ain't here. She was in here the other day. Uh, Napa Auto Parts. What's her name? Udapa. What's that child's name? Napa. She's cute too. She got that little deep raspy voice. But I think she's one of those pro-black women. And I'm like, wow. We're going to have to talk about pretty. Don't waste the pretty. Uh, pretty privilege. <laughs> Such a waste of pretty. Don't waste pretty. What did I type the other day? Uh, I, I typed something in there about don't. Such a waste of pretty. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't be, yeah, don't waste that. Such a waste of pretty. <laughs> Do I have acknowledged super chats? Uh, if I see them going, what's, let me, is there one that I need to check yours? Sorry, Taylor. When shows are going on, sometimes there's too much going on and YouTube has changed the system. Uh, I haven't been able to do a lot of stuff today. YouTube has changed the studio, so we can't see a lot of the stuff we used to. What's the question, Taylor? What is the question, Taylor? Because we, I can't go back and I can't see some of this stuff. That's why I was late starting the show because they changed the studio and everything else. So if I missed it, uh, I don't see your question. So my bad. Um, you cut your own hair? Hell no. Hell to the no, no. No, man, I don't cut my hair. Mm-mm. Oh, damn it. Why, why am I going to cut my own hair, man? Pay people to do that stuff for you, man. No. Let me see if I can find it this way. Yeah, they've, stu they've shut studio down. There's no way to find any of this stuff. Sorry, Taylor. I can't find it. They've shut the studio down, and it kept showing uh, an, an error earlier, so done our best it's not as though i don't want to read but but i will say that uh once a channel starts to have a certain amount of, of live viewers once you get over like 500 live viewers um it becomes really hard to keep up with the chat uh i couldn't turn chat on slow mode either so that's why uh i didn't say anything so anyway at the end of the day guys have a good day I'm up out of here. Peace. We are gone. <music> Tiffany, join the group. Join the mix. You know, she'd be fun in there. You're gonna come in there throwing bombs. You're gonna come in there throwing perfume bombs. Hi! Bit Tiff Perfume Bomb <laughs> Join me on Patreon Streams Monday 6.30 Eastern Standard Time These two more videos this week Drop in Thank you to the Patreons For making this happen Join me on IG Videos and live streams You will see only in the frat room Yeah, baby. If you have submit your video request to topic ideas, there. Questions about services? Go to buykevinsamuels.com. Check products. Select your service. You can purchase there. Or you can even go directly to scheduling. Purchase your service. Schedule your date and time there. But don't ask me for free because I do nothing for free. And neither should you. Peace out.